Thank you for tuning in. Just wanted to introduce myself and my beloved colleague to this event. Uh, welcome everyone to the Night of Power. My name is Abdullah Ibrahim. I will. I have been your committee lead for this event. And inshallah, you'll be seeing me later on in your program. And I want to hand it off to my brother Muhammad for him to introduce himself, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, everybody. It's your brother, it's your boy, Muhammad Awad al Barghuthi from Islamic Relief USA, right here in Dallas, Texas. Welcome to the Night of Power pre show. We want everybody to make sure that you've got the link, irusa.org slash live. Go to the Islamic Relief page on YouTube and uh, share and let everybody, inshallah, get into the event. And uh, we're about to start in a couple of minutes. So let's get on, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. Whether you're going to be tuning in the entire time or not, whether you're going to be focused on your screen, do what Muhammad just told you. Go ahead and just share it. Share it on Facebook. Uh, make sure it's playing in your house. It's just going to be a night and reflections, spiritual reminders, something that we we all want to take a part of tonight, inshallah. And just to let you know, what is this segment? It doesn't feel like a like a like a true introduction to the program. Throughout pre periodically throughout this program, we'll have like an audience engagement portion where we'll be engaging with the audience, asking you guys a question, and asking you guys to join the chat, inshallah, and uh, answer some questions for us. So, Muhammad, if you can hit us with our first question of the night. Oh, bismillah, bismillah, bismillah. I want everybody to tell me, where are you watching from? Start dropping the names of the cities, states, countries. Let's hear some uh, some of the people say where they're from, inshallah. Muhammad, Muhammad, where are you watching from? Well, I'm from Dallas, Texas, baby. Awesome, awesome. I'm from uh, the San Francisco Bay Area. More specifically, um, I'm coming to you live from Santa Clara, California. All right, Abdullah, start naming out some of these uh, some of these cities. Okay, Bismillah. Let's see what we got. So I know we we have people tuning in from Portland today. I know we have people tuning in from Seattle. I know we have people tuning in from here in the Bay Area. We have someone from Minnesota. America, they, they specifically mentioned America and Minnesota. We have New Jersey, New Jersey, your oh, hometown, mashallah. You know, I got people moving, I got people tuning in from downstairs. <laughs> oh, mashallah, mashallah. You know, I get the families Leesburg, in. Leesburg, Virginia. Leesburg, Virginia. Martinsburg, West Virginia. MashaAllah. All right. Bismillah. Atlanta, Georgia. Right, let's check, Atlanta, Georgia. Mashallah. Let's check out another question, Abdullah, man. Let's see. Bismillah. What was the last IRUSA you attended? Are you what talking was about the myself last? Or are you asking everyone. <laughs> well, I'm asking you and everybody. What was the last IRUSA event you attended? For me, the last one I attended was your event, the Arabic uh, Arabic event, the fundraiser for Yemen, Syria, and Palestine. Mashallah, it was called Hatta Yuhib al Akhi. It's such a beautiful name. That's right. Let's, uh, right. inshallah, look at the, uh, take a look at that chat. Abdullah, let's mention some of these brothers and sisters' names uh, and the cities that they're from. We got, we got Cind Cindy Fabri from Santa Cruz, California. That's right here next to us where the beaches are. We got Lanny Bay from Atlanta, Georgia. We got uh, Nikolai from Southwest Co Colorado. I was just in Colorado yesterday. Um, we got uh, Shannon from Leesburg. We got Medium from New Jersey. We got Aisha Crawford from California, so we got some, uh, we got some, we got some West Coast and East Coast representation here. Alhamdulillah. Hello, 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 and then, man. Alhamdulillah. Answer this question for me: Are you a donor or a volunteer for Islamic Relief? What is your relationship with Islamic Relief? Let me hear it. I'm pronouncing well, this wrong, but. You can answer Laureato. both if you want. Yeah, you can say both. Yeah, we got Laureato. And if I pronounce that incorrectly, forgive me. From DC, Lanny Lanny Bay is a volunteer. 
Cindy is a donor, mashallah. We got both. Oh, we got, we got Yahya Khalid. Khalid. Donor, mashallah. Aisha is a volunteer. Also from the best state, from the best state in the country, California. Mashallah. So check this out, Allah. Uh, everybody that, oh, mashallah, whoa, 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 Asli Ali, we got a volunteer, volunteer in Kenya, my friend. From Kenya, mashallah, mashallah. That's the first person mentioning they're tuning in from outside the country, mashallah. We're asking them to make the offer us, it's the night time over there, it's the night of 27th right. in, uh, in Kenya right now. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, Shannon. Yeah, Shannon said, "We loved volunteering for packing events years ago. My kids will always have the best memories of that. They asked to do it again. Well, inshallah, hopefully, with everything, uh, with everything slowing down with this pandemic, we're starting to open up more. We're starting to have more meal packs and more volunteering opportunities. So, inshallah, Shannon, that that'll be coming soon, and hopefully, we'll see you at our next uh, meal pack. Inshallah. I wonder which state Shannon was at uh, when she did the packouts." She mentioned it earlier. I don't think it, I don't think it's there anymore. So, inshallah, the official introduction for the program will start soon. But to give you a brief overview of what the intention was behind this program, the intention behind it was we knew that you all were going to be in acts of worship throughout the day. It's the la it's from the last ten nights, the last ten days of Ramadan. It's the twenty seventh specifically, and we know that even in the nighttime that you guys will be an acts of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we wanted to show you guys that, you know, we really thought about that when putting this program together. And we wanted to offer value to, to you all by having Qur'an being played and having it be a Layla Qur'ani, a night of listening to Qur'an, as well as like spiritual reminders, as well as an opportunity for you to donate and for you to hear about some of the projects that we're doing. And uh, alhamdulillah, What's very unique about this year's program, about this year's program, is that we have eight different Qur'an from eight different countries. So while Muhammad adds on to what I'm saying, can you guys guess which countries our Qur'an are from? Oh, this is going to be good. So while everybody's guessing, I want you to think about tonight. Think about the reward that could be tonight. I think Sheikh Yasser Qadi said... Two and a half months of reward for every minute. So say subhanallah for one minute. It's like two and a half months of it. So this is the time we're preparing for the night. We're getting our hearts ready by listening to the Quran, by having this event all day, playing on our TVs, whether it's during iftar time, during asr time, during duhr time, it's all day inshallah. And listening to the speakers that are going to soften our hearts. And inshallah get us ready to make that catch and, and take advantage of the night, bi'idhnillah. Inshallah. So we have Asli Ali. He's, he said, first thing he said was, Allah. And then he said, Egypt. First country, he said Egypt, right? Then he added again, he said, Hassan Salih is from Egypt. He said, I love him. I love that man too, mashallah. Hassan Salih, from one of the best Qur'an I've ever heard, mashallah. And one of the like best people I've met, subhanAllah. Like his adab is just something that's so refreshing. And Muhammad... He's originally from New Jersey, where Sheikh Hassan Saleh is right now. Oh, mashallah, I mean, Sheikh Hassan someone, Saleh. Someone, someone, oh, no. oh, yeah. What did he father, say? Father, no, because someone said that someone said that we have a Qari from Mecca. Well, I don't know. Do we? Unfortunately, this program we don't. Unfortunately, this program we don't All have right. from Mecca. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, look. Uh, Every single country, subhanAllah, there's a, there's a beautiful qari from. And Sheikh Hassan Saleh is dear and near to my heart. I have I have driven with him uh, all the way to Boston once for a fundraiser. And mashallah alayh, uh, you know, he, uh, just hearing him live and his masjid was, he was 10, 15 minutes away from my house. And uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him for his efforts. I even heard him on the radio in, in Jordan 10 years ago, just on a regular radio. And uh, alhamdulillah, wow. may Allah preserve him. He's very humble. This was how long ago? Ten years ago, I was in Jordan and I heard his voice in the radio in a taxi. I recognized it. Mashallah, that's 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 interesting because he uh, 
he uh, I feel like he just got like on the international scene just in the last couple of years like he like blew up Mashallah exactly and then uh, subhanallah and I was just hearing like it was like a like maybe maybe it was one of his first recordings uh, that they were playing or maybe he had a uh, somebody in the radio station was a Sheikh Hassan Saleh fan in Jordan wow. you never know Mashallah that's awesome, mashallah. We got someone who said it. Morocco. That is correct. One of our Qur'an is from Morocco, Abdullah Marhum. So, so far we got two. All right, what else do we have, brothers and sisters? Let's uh, let's light up the, uh, the board with different types Where? of countries. Yes, which, which countries are our Qur'an from tonight? Well, you know what, Abdullah? It looks like... We're going to have to let everybody wait and see which Qurra from what countries and where they come from because the program is about to start. Inshallah, inshallah. Now we're ready to hand it off to one of our beloved colleagues to officially introduce the program. And uh, it'll be going to Sheikh Saad al Digwi. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. And Bismillah, let's get the show on the road. Amen. While we search for the night of power, families are searching for shelter. Mothers are searching for clean water, and children are searching for safety. The believers are like one body. When any part aches, the whole body aches. Help those in need find what they are searching for, and may Allah help you find the night of power. Donate now to Islamic Relief. We are one. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ولي الصالحين وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا ومصطفانا وقائدنا ومعلمنا محمد رسول الله الصادق الوعد الأمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد My dear brothers and sisters everywhere السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته This is your brother Imam Saad al digwi from Islamic Relief USA First of all, I would like to thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى Because without Allah سبحانه وتعالى we cannot do anything Allah سبحانه وتعالى gives us this opportunity this every year alhamdulillah to be with you and to help each other do something for ourselves before allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so first alhamdulillah rabbil alameen second i would like to thank all of you everywhere those who are joining us today in this beautiful program to support islamic relief and to support those who are in need our program tonight is called the night of power better than 1000 month laylatul qadr al layla al mubaraka allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr inna anzalnahu fi laylatin mubaraka laylatul qadr khayrun min alf shahr we have an amazing program tonight this program is all about quran and reflections and of course at the end of the day the main outcome is to help those who are in need this program is mainly about uh, islamic relief uh, usa projects in african countries however if you would like to donate and support any other country please feel free to do so alhamdulillah rabbil alameen we have a beautiful group of very famous Qurra of Al Quran Al Kareem, like Sheikh Ibrahim Al Dardasawi, Sheikh Ahmad Suddiq, Sheikh Hassan Saleh, Sheikh Abdullah Marhoum, Sheikh Muhammad Al Zahid, Sheikh Abdul Rahman Saadin, Sheikh Muhammad Hadi Tori, and Sheikh Ahmad Babur. Along with that, we have another amazing group of speakers to motivate us and to remind us tonight, like Sister Yasmin Mujahid. Imam Suhaib Webb and Imam Khalid Latif. Again, my brothers and sisters, this program is to uh, focus on and highlight 
our projects in African countries because our brothers and sisters in Africa, they need a lot of help. However, and again, feel free to donate whatever you want to donate. Tonight, inshallah, we hope and pray that this night, the night of 27th, is Laylatul Qadr. And the Prophet wasallam made it very clear to us that anyone who misses Laylatul Qadr, anyone who is deprived from Laylatul Qadr, he's really deprived. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to make us among those who are deprived from the barakah and the rewards of Laylatul Qadr. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant all of us Laylatul Qadr and to grant uh, all of us Jannatu uh, Al-Firdawsi, Allahumma Ameen. So please, my brothers and sisters, whatever we do tonight, we know the reward. As if you have done it for uh, more than 1,000 months. And I would like to remind myself and you about this. The Quran did not say that Laylatul Qadr, the night of decree or power, is equal to 1,000 months. No, the Quran said it is better than 1,000 months. Whatever we do tonight, your zakat, your sadaqa, your dua, your support, especially to those who are in need, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will treat it as if you have done it in more than 83 years plus. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us ikhlas and to help us all, inshallah, do our best tonight, support Islamic relief with our zakat and sadaqah, with our dua as well, because we need your dua so that we continue to do what we have been doing, alhamdulillah. I would like also to, again, thank you, and I ask Allah to bless all of you. Please make sure to invite everybody and make sure to stay with us till the end of, of the program, inshallah. We have an amazing program tonight, inshallah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make sure you remind your family members, relatives, neighbors, friends, anybody who can contribute tonight, share and care, inshallah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, I would like to thank our main uh, um, sponsor, which is Amana Mutual Fund. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them and bless them. Now, my brothers and sisters, I would like also to uh, invite my dear brother, Abdullah Fadli, who's going to, inshallah, take over and introduce the first segment of uh, this beautiful program. Brother Abdullah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Barakallahu feek, Sheikh Saad. Thank you so much for that beautiful introduction to this program. <laughs> and, uh, wallahi alhamdulillah, Allah ibarak feek. I'm doing great. I feel very privileged and honored to be part of such a special program. But jazakallahu <laughs> khair on that beautiful intro. Barakallahu feek. Sahaba ya Akhi Abdullah. Alhamdulillah. I just need your dua and everyone's dua on this special day. Please. <laughs> I have to make multiple <laughs> asks today, but that's the first one, insha'Allah. Barakallahu feek. Wa iyaakum, Akhi Abdullah. Jazakallahu khairan. Please, the floor is yours. Bismillah. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man walah. Amma ba'd, my dear brothers and sisters, viewers from around the world, viewers from the West Coast, the East Coast, the Midwest, from Kenya, from the UK, from Canada. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this very, very special event today. Wallahi, we are so honored uh, to be part of something like this, where today is a day about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's words. Kalamullah, the Quran. What an honorable event to be a part of. What an honorable event for us to be joining together and uh, participating in, alhamdulillah. Wallahi, one of the best things about these events, these virtual events, is not just the content that we're seeing, the beautiful content, but it's about gathering together. It's about gathering as a unit and just being with each other. And that's something that we've missed for so long, since last year, since the pandemic. And there's so many things that we've lost. Uh, Sheikh Saad reminded us not to squander uh, the opportunity of Laylatul Qadr that's worth and better than a thousand, not worth, but better than a thousand months, alhamdulillah. And so my role today is to keep the show going. My role today is to keep the transitions moving from one qari to another, from one piece of content to another. Uh, and so 
for me, I'll, pl I'll play my role as the backdrop, inshallah, bi'idnillahi ta'ala. Um, and with that said, I want to get started. I don't want us to hold up. In the meantime, I'm going to continue to remind you, our brothers and sisters that are in need are there and waiting for us to answer their call. And so make sure today that you get on the phone, 855-447-1009, and make a contribution. Or you can text 50155, or you can log on and make a contribution. Please do not squander this opportunity. And with that said, I'd like to start the program with our first reciter. Remember, there are reciters from all over the world. Our first one hails from Morocco. Uh, this is Sheikh Abdullah, who is uh, the founder of Marhum Institute. Sheikh uh, Abdullah Ibrahim, forgive me. Sheikh Abdullah Ibrahim is the founder of Marhum Institute. He learned Quran from, uh, from famous Quranic uh, sheikhs in Morocco. He has 20 years of experience in leading prayers. His voice is beautiful, and I'm honored to uh, welcome him and introduce his segment, insha'Allah. Bismillah, barakallahu feekum. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن هذا Thank you. 
تفصيلا وكل إنسان ألزمناه طائره في عنقه ونخرج له يوم القيامة ونخرج له وكل إنسان ألزمناه طائره في عنقه ونخرج له يوم القيامة ونخرج له يوم القيامة كتابا يلقاه منشورا اقرأ كتابك كفى بنفسك اليوم عليك حسيبا اقرأ كتابك كفى بنفسك اليوم عليك حسيبا من اهتدى فإنما يهتدي لنفسه ومن ضل فإنما يضل عليها ولا تنزر وانزرة وزر أخرى وما كنا معذبين حتى نبعث رسولا وإذا أردنا أن نهلك قرية أمرنا متر فيها وإذا أردنا أن أمرنا متر فيها فانفسقوا فيها فحق عليها القول فدمرناها تدميرا وكم أهلكنا من القرون من بعد نوح وكم أهلكنا من القرون من بعد نوح وكفى برب بك بذنوب عبادي خبيرا بصيرا من كان يريد العاجل تعجلنا له فيها ما نشاء ثم جعلنا له جهنم يصلاها مذموما مدحورا 
وَمَنْ أَرَادَ الْآخِرَةَ وَسَعَى لَا سَعْيَهَا وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ فَأُولَئِكَ كَانَ سَعْيُهُمْ مَشْكُورًا كلا نمد كلا نمد هؤلاء وهؤلاء من عطاء ربك وما كان عطاء ربك محظورا كلا نمد هؤلاء وهؤلاء من عطاء ربك وما كان عطاء ربك محظورا انظر كيف فضلنا بعضهم على بعض وللآخرة أكثر درجات وأكبر تفضيلا لا تجعل مع الله إلها آخر فتقعد مذموما مخذولا وقضى ربك ألا تعبدوا إلا إياه وقضى ربك ألا تعبدوا إما يبلغن عندك الكبر أحدهما أو كلاهما فلا تقل لهما أف فلا تقل لهما أف ولا تنهرهما فلا تقل لهما أف ولا تنهرهما وقل لهما قولا كريما واخفض لهما جناح الذل من الرحمة وقل رب ارحمهما وقل رب ارحمهما وقل رب ارحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا ربكم أعلم بما في نفوسكم 
صدق الله العظيم جزاك الله خير شيخ عبد الله مرحوم for that beautiful recitation may Allah reward you uh, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to benefit from that recitation uh, when we listen to these ayat you know uh, there is this calming and tranquil feeling, subhanAllah. And I hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to manifest that in some of our actions. You know, our deen isn't just about, you know, the feeling internal thing. We need to act upon it, right? When we feel that tranquility in our hearts and that meaning and we understand those meanings, we need to do something about it. And so when I reflect on the ayat about our parents, right? وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ ihsana, Is to take care of those parents. I think about those who don't have parents, the child who didn't grow up with a mother and father or who lost his father and who can hardly put together a sentence to describe how he feels. One orphan was asked, his name is Faruq, he was asked, how do you feel? He said, my heart is sad because he's trying to put together words to describe the feelings of grief, right? And so when you add grief on top of poverty, on top of hunger, on top of lack of access to education and healthcare, it becomes unbearable. And for us, I consider that an obligation for us to respond to their call. And so today is a day about reflecting on these ayat, allowing us to get the shifa from the Qur'an, because the Qur'an is a shifa, it's healing. And for us to do something when we hear it, inshallah. So please, during these transitional moments after listening, inshallah, to these beautiful ayat uh, from these uh, reciters, please, Follow the link and donate generously. Donate to an orphan. Donate to a child in Mali, right? The struggle that's happening in Mali, we'll get into it in a little bit. But before we go there, it's very important for us to hear from uh, our leadership. And so I'd like to, uh, inshallah, introduce uh, Sharif Ali. Sharif Ali is the CEO of Islamic Relief USA. Uh, an attorney and committed advocate. Uh, Mr. Ali has been with Islamic Relief. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm actually uh, doing the wrong segment. Uh, and uh, I, we, we need to introduce... Uh, uh, we need to introduce the director of fundraising. Yes, the director of fundraising, inshallah, Sheikh Ahmed Shahata. Uh, I have the wrong thing in front of me, so forgive me and pardon me for one second, inshallah. Bear with me, inshallah, so I could appropriately get this. Uh, yes, sorry about that, guys. Uh, Sheikh Ahmed Shahada, uh, who holds a master's degree in management, is certified in fundraising management and has more than 20 years of experience as a fund development professional. Since 2018, taking over the fund development division, Ahmed has helped grow its humanitarian work to reach millions of people in need around the world and has helped to nurture and build long-lasting community relationships. It is uh, my honor and privilege to introduce this segment uh, with our dear beloved Sheikh Ahmed Shahada. Uh, Bismillah, please go ahead. Assalamu alaikum, Islamic Relief friends, family, and stakeholders. I wanted to thank you all for your attendance and welcome you all to my favorite Islamic Relief event. The idea for this event came to me after conducting a similar type of event in different communities across the country as a Layla Qur'aniya or Night of Qur'an. Last year, when we were first hit by the pandemic, as we adjusted to the virtual world, we decided to have this same concept as an Islamic Relief signature event. This year, we are proud to tell you that we put in the extra effort to have diverse Qur'a, Qur'an reciters and represent our larger international community. We are blessed tonight to have Qur'a, Qur'an reciters from Turkey, Lebanon, Pakistan, Egypt, South Africa, Palestine, Morocco, and Senegal. It is important for us to have this representation in our program as we know that our supporters come from all across the world. Inshallah, tonight we want to focus our effort 
on supporting our projects in Africa. As many of you may or may not know, the African countries that we work in usually fell short in receiving donations compared to other causes and countries that we work in. Tonight, we wanted the community to come together to support this cause as we help each other finish Ramadan on a strong note and maximize the aid we are giving our sisters and brothers there. I pray that you are all rewarded for your continuous support and especially on this blessed night greater than 1,000 months. Tonight, we will hear about some of our projects in Somalia, Kenya, Mali, Malawi, Ethiopia, Niger, Sudan, and South Sudan. Let us all come together, enjoy the recitation of the Quran, and help our sisters and brothers in Africa, because at the end of the day, we are one. Jazakumullahu khairan. Jazakallahu khair. Barakallahu feek, Sheikh Ahmed, uh, for that reminder, inshallah, and focusing us back to giving, focusing back on what we can do, inshallah. Uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi reminds us of active empathy, the empathy of the heart and the empathy of the limbs. Once you feel something and you feel for your brothers and sisters in Mali, for example, you go and you do something when you hear about their condition. Right now, they've, they're struggling with chronic poverty, with drought, right? The climate, cha the climate crisis has caused a lot of issues in Mali and that just perpetuates the other needs. And when we hear these stories, wallahi, you can have the potential to become, uh, for lack of a better word, hopeless. But I know because of our donors and because of our support, because of people around the world, that we have been able to help so many people in Mali, specifically in Mali. And so with that said, I'd like us to transition to this video, inshallah, to give us a brief glimpse into some of those programs. Barakallahu feekum. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, look at those beautiful faces and look at those beneficiaries and those communities uh, who are benefiting from our work, Alhamdulillah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the opportunity to do something with. Today is about multiplying our efforts and not squandering the opportunity of Laylatul Qadr. And so when you see the beautiful face of a child in Mali who may need our support, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us privilege and we, we say that they are our brothers and sisters. What does that relationship mean? Do we have to wait for our brothers and sisters to knock on our door for us to do something? Or is it because of the distance between us that allows us to forget them? I don't believe that. I've seen with my own eyes, not just the stories of the beneficiaries, but the stories of donors who recognize their privilege and the answer the call of an orphan, a widow, or someone who is hungry or a miskeen. And so today is the story of the beneficiary and the donor who is taking advantage of today in order to help those in need in Mali. And when it comes to Mali, there's no better person to hear than from our beloved president, Anwar Khan, uh, from Islamic Relief. And I say that because he's been there. He's been on the ground with stories himself. You could hear me talking, but I haven't been there, right? We need to hear the stories, uh, inshallah. So I'd love to introduce uh, Brother Anwar Khan and Sister Layla Khan, inshallah. Anwar Khan, uh, he, is the, um, he has been there from the beginning, obviously, for 27 years. Uh, and he's been committed to humanitarian work and allowed him to become the co-founder of Islamic Relief USA in 1993. He is now the current president of Islamic Relief USA based in Washington, D.C. And his wife, uh, Sister Layla Khan, 
uh, who is uh, the Assistant Vice President of Marketing and Communications at Guidance Residential. For over 22 years, uh, Leila has been volunteering with Islamic Relief USA. In that time, uh, she spearheaded the Islamic Relief USA Aid Toy Drive, has traveled internationally on delegations, and has supported multiple organizational campaigns across the country. One of her most prominent experiences with Islamic Relief USA was her trip to Mali, and that is what this story, inshallah, is about. And I'm so excited to have them both on and to hear from them. And you guys can take it away whenever you're ready. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum, Abdullah. Uh, mashallah, it's an honor to be here. I'm here with my wife, Layla, and we've been married, mashallah, 21 years. But as you mentioned, as Abdullah mentioned, she's been a volunteer for 22 years before she met me, alhamdulillah. And after we got married, she said, I want to go to the field. And I was like, look, I'm not, we're not running a tourist agency that we just <laughs> send everybody because you have friends or family with yeah. IR. But she's, she did 10 years body of work of organizing events in the community, raising a lot of money, motivating people. And then we went in 2010. Now, we went just after the Haiti earthquake. So I was in the Haiti earthquake, came back cleaned up, packed up, and very soon went with her to Mali. Now, Mali is, a, is in Western Africa, what's called the Sahel. When I was telling people I'm going to Mali, I remember on a train, that's a very beautiful island. I said, no, no, not Bali, Mali. Mali, so the first time I went to Mali was about um, 20 years ago. Um, after I was married, then I went again um, 10 years later with Leila. So I wanted, um, often we overlook what the sisters have done in the work of Islamic Relief or Islamic organizations and many organizations. So I wanted Leila to talk, not as my wife, but as an active volunteer and her experiences in Mali. So Leila, what was the one story which really affected you or one moment that affected you in Mali? Um, first, salam alaikum, everybody, um, and it's a pleasure to be here. It was a two-week, over two-week delegation, and the one story that was most impactful was going to the clinic um, and seeing one doctor amongst hundreds of women and small children. And it was like we were in a movie with mud huts, uh, no electricity, people standing in lines and lines and lines with babies on their backs, children running around everywhere. And, and one, one doctor that I got to meet and just a handful of medical professionals waiting to see each patient. Um, and the kids were just, you know, they were, they were sick. The mothers were sick. The children were crying. Um, again, it was just like a scene from a movie, but the difference is, we couldn't leave. We were there in real life and, you know, it was just very profound. We went to a few clinics. We did. The one that had the most effect on me was when we went in the nighttime in the north. You're right. There was blood on the floor. There was blood on the walls. There was blood yeah. on the beddings. There were people just bleeding. Yeah. We're seeing pictures right now that are breaking our hearts with COVID-19 from Delhi in India, of people yeah. not being able to breathe. You're right. But we ignore that in a good year in Mali, there's blood on the Absolutely. floors of the excrement, blood, and just and and there's there you don't hear crying actually, and you didn't hear moaning because people were just in so much pain, without any relief, they just went silent, quiet. So we saw a lot of strong scenes, and what people don't yeah. understand is that what we think is a luxury in America. Is maybe a um, S class Mercedes or a McMansion. Yeah. Can you tell us what the luxury was in Rama Ravus in the north when we went up there? There was no electricity, there was no water. Again, everything was in mud huts. For us, even being there as a delegate was, was a water bottle. We had food and amenities driven in from five hours for us to sleep and make camp. There was no electricity. We had to manage our way, you know, in the evenings. Um, a bottle of water was, was a luxury, a, a great deal. Um, having somewhere to sleep, you know, like a mat or a sheet, that was a great, 
great deal. And again, they didn't have it locally. We had to have it driven in, yeah. you know, from four hours away. Plates and glasses and yes. mosquito nets were luxury yeah. of women for us. Yeah. So when you left and you saw all the misery, According to the Humanitarian Development Index, Mali is near the bottom of the world in this. It's one of the poorest countries in the world. One of the richest men in the world came from Mali. And now it's one of the poorest countries in the world. Yeah. So they have a lot of richness at Timbuktu in the scrolls and the mm -hmm. Qurans. The heritage. And mm -hmm. Beautiful heritage of so much light of knowledge. Yes. Now, how did you feel when you saw the darkness of despair over there when you left? How did you feel when you arrived in London on the way back to America? I remember not only myself, but most of the delegation, when we finally got to the airport, we were in tears. Some of us dropped to our knees. We were crying because we were having like Western accommodations after over two weeks, you know, of being in this, in the, you know, in this, in this area. And we were in tears. It was grateful to be able to sit in a bathtub, take a shower, you know, have a cup of water. Um, and just have those comforts that we are so accustomed to. And what she means by have, by have a cup of water mean you were able to get it from the faucet. Yeah, absolutely. Whereas before a cup of water may be white or brown. Exactly. Now you didn't have to worry about drinking from the faucet. Exactly. And the thing is like we're like regular donors. We watch the videos at the dinners, we, we hear the presentations, but then we get to go home to our you know, comfort and, you know, driving our cars and, and we're, we're away from it. When we were in these countries, there's nowhere to go. This was reality, you know, for over two weeks. And this is life for them okay. every moment. Remember tonight is inshallah, maybe one of the nights of power. It is definitely one of the last 10 nights. You heard from myself and my wife. Can you think of a better place where to give your zakah? your sadaqah. As we described to you, it wasn't just that they don't have much medicine or doctors or equipment. I'm telling you they were bleeding when we were there and the floors had blood and they were barely able to clean the blood off the floors. When we talk about emergencies, we see this horrific stuff coming, but we don't see the quiet. We don't see the quiet. Um, despair we don't see people quietly dying like they were in that clinic we've now brought it to your attention please give a matching gift please go if you are a cfc employee when it's time give if you work for microsoft intel cisco companies that do matching gifts please give even more please remember that even if your gift isn't matched by your employer your gift mashallah will get 70 to infinite times the reward on a normal day of Ramadan and even more, inshallah, on a potential night of power. As you see on the screen, $110 for medicine. Can you think of a more beautiful Eid gift? So please, give what we can. Also wanted to mention about the orphans, if you remember, we mm -hmm. saw them there. Mm -hmm. I remember on the trip before I went with you, I saw a woman with leprosy who had lost some of her fingers. Mm -hmm. Leprosy is a disease where you, um, it's a flesh eating disease. Yeah. She's a grandmother. Her daughter, um, her son, sorry, her son died. And then her daughter-in-law daughter became insane and had to go to a mental asylum. So now the grandmother is bringing up the little orphan. She said, thank you, Islamic colleagues. Mm -hmm. The money that you're giving me, as you can see, is $43 a month for orphan sponsorship. She said, the money that you're giving me is so much, I can give food to the poor kids. SubhanAllah. That's and she thing. was living in a yeah. mud hut. SubhanAllah. And her carpet was sand. SubhanAllah. And, uh, walls were made of mud. And she's saying how rich she is. Yeah. On, under what was it, thirty-five, forty dollars that we were giving? Because apart from cash, we also give other support. Yeah. And she said, "How rich we are!" Thank you, Islamic relief. Yeah. So please, Niger is next to Mali. That's five hundred eighty-eight dollars a year. Mali is the one that we've been asked to talk about. And I was just amazed with how much dignity. That's what I was going to speak on, yeah. Just very big hearts, not only looking out for themselves and their immediate um, people to take care of, but also they were looking at their neighbors and the other people in the community, how they could, you know, divide what amenities they had received to, to, share, to share that. And that's, 
again, something we don't see very often, unfortunately, but it was very beautiful. Have you seen voice that rejective to faith is voice that rejective to orphan and urge, if not the feeding of the needy? That's from Surah al Mon. Leila, can you tell us after that trip 11 years ago, what did you do yeah. to urge the feeding of the needy and to help the orphan? So obviously that trip still sits very much, you know, in my mind, in my heart. And alhamdulillah, when we came back, we'd come back to Dallas. And immediately, you know, I had opportunities to speak to different networks and communities within Dallas. Um, and we had started um, gatherings where, you know, the women, my friends and different networks across the country would start um, sponsoring orphans independently, aside from whatever they were already donating, you know, with their families, um, they themselves as individuals started um, sponsoring orphans. And not only in Mali, all, all over the world, mashallah. Uh, when we moved to Virginia as well, we started hosting events and gatherings and fundraising efforts. And cumulatively, I believe we, we approached nearly 100 orphans being sponsored in the course of uh, that time period. And still to this day, um, mashallah, those orphans are still being sponsored you know, by those initiatives um, after coming back home. And to be honest, when you know, I'm not African descent, my husband isn't either. So people are wondering, why are you talking about Mali? How is it relevant to you in your life? And we were like, subhanAllah, we have kids, our friends have children, and we saw so many people that were, were you know, were, were challenged and making, you know, bridging that gap that it's not us and them. It's we are all one. And that's the message. We are all one. And we have to feel that you know and support that effort so. when i asked my friends in mali tell me about the poverty here he said unworld the kids when we deliver food aid some rice falls on the floor or grains the kids pick up the sand with the um flour and they take it home to be cooked in dirt what we throw away in our garbage tonight think about it from our start that these people, these little kids are scouring for grains of rice and for grains, uh, any grain that they can take home. Please remember, tonight, inshallah, is the night of power. A thousand dollars of food aid will go a long way. Your zakah and your sadaqah and supporting orphans in one of the poorest countries in the world will go a long way. And please, one last request, I'm asking all of you to please pray for Islamic Relief Staff over a dozen who have died in the last 20 years to deliver the aid. Remember, it's really easy for you to donate. Just go to the irusa.org slash give and you can donate. But remember, different people around the world have given their lives and they were trying to help orphans and they themselves left yes. orphans. Like Brother Zulfikar left five orphans behind in Pakistan and a brother in Yemen when I was there two years ago. So please remember that with the amazing work that you're going to hear Brother Abdullah Fadli talk about today and you, inshallah you're going to see Abdullah Ibrahim, Muhammad Awad and they, they like to smile, it's the sunnah. But remember, inside their heart, my heart breaks when we hear our brothers and sisters are dying. Their heart, my heart breaks when we go overseas and we see the horrendous poverty. Tonight is a celebration, mashallah, of the mercy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Give that mercy. Give a little bit of it to, ma to Mali. Jazakallah khair. Salaam alaikum. Salaam alaikum. Jazakallah khair. Subhanallah, you, I have things prepared to say. But you have to throw them out the window when you hear about the, the because I've never heard these stories until just now with you, the viewers. And it's remarkable. I mean, the condition that some of these people are in. So, so, so thank you so much for sharing, Brother Anwar, Sister Leila. I mean, it's a, it's a valuable experience. Uh, Abdullah helps me, brother, every time I talk those stories. Yeah. I really, I'm, I'm getting tears in my eyes now because you, you're taking me back to a place where I thought this day. I never, I never went on a delegation after that. By the way, it just broke. I never heart. asked to go back because it's just, no. it's, it's not, it's real life, and to see it and to witness it, and then we have that amana. We're accountable for what we bore witness. Mm. So, because we have an amana when we come back, yeah. and this is why part of me always dreads going to different places in Africa because I feel we don't do justice, Abdullah. It's not their fault. It's our fault. Yeah. Unless we someone who looks like us, we don't want to really trust people. No, I give my family back home. What does that mean? If your family's in Mali, you don't help. If they don't look like you, you don't help. So one thing I wanted to tell you, Abdullah, which 
really had an effect on me, brother. It's when I was in uh, Chicago years ago with some Palestinian brothers, and they chose to donate for the orphans in Mali. Then I was with some African brothers, and they chose to donate to Palestinians. I was like, oh, that's Islam. That's it. That's what Islamic yeah. relief is about. That's the message. Uh, how, well, obviously, what we saw yesterday in Jerusalem, of course. But at the same time, you didn't hear, Abdullah, what I just told you. And I'm sure your heart breaks when these kids are dying. In one clinic, I asked a question, what difference does the Islamic relief support of this clinic make? Imam Zayd Shakur opened the clinic. They said, before you supported us, we didn't do any vaccinations. Now this is a maternity hospital. So number one, no mothers have died in childbirth, whereas they used to die in this village every year. Then I said, what about the vaccinations? 70% less children are dying now because of the vaccinations yeah. from that clinic. Know. How many Amazing. mothers were saved babies in childbirth? That's one or two every year, a few every year. Dozens of children are not dying in that village because of the support for the medical care. Writing down $110, it doesn't mean anything. Every number that we show to Abdullah is a life behind it. Yeah. SubhanAllah, thank be you so much. Allah. Thank you so much for sharing. Barakallahu feekum. Uh, thank you so much for sharing the, those experiences. And I hope that myself, I've benefited greatly. And I hope that the viewers are benefiting as well, inshallah. Please, right now is the time for action. Right now you see text IRUSA to 50155. Log on to the website irusa.org slash give or make that phone call and make your donation today. Remember, today we're not trying to squander the opportunity of the night of power. Our donation goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before it reaches the children in Mali or the hungry in Niger. In Niger. Remember that. Remember that we're here in need as well. We're here in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and forgiveness. Uh, and so, uh, you know, again, like I said, I could prepare some words, but the experience is there. And remember that the experience of that orphan and the person who is dying, it might make you feel hopeless, but the truth is the hope is there when we act on it when we act on that empathy, right? I had a donor uh, once tell me they were, they were down on their luck. They had to cut out their rent. They had to start uh, cutting their expenses because they lost their job. And there was one bill in their account that they were on the phone with me on the verge of tears that they didn't want to let go. Do you know what that bill was? It was the bill to sponsor an orphan. They held on to that. And so the story of the donor is just as important. The story of what we do with this information is just as important. There is suffering there, but there is also hope and there is also maghfirah and forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tonight. Please do not forget to support. And with that said, again, I promised you I'm going to be a canvas and transition to the next segments. And today is about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's words. Kalamullah Allah the Quran. And so I'd like to introduce our next speaker uh, who is uh, uh, Qari Ahmed Babur or Babur, forgive me. Hafiz Ahmed was born in the city of Konya, the spiritual heart of Turkey, and is a graduate of the prestigious Nesmitin Erbakan University in Konya. Imam Ahmed was 12 years old. Uh, he completely memorized the Quran when he was 12 years old, subhanAllah. He has over 15 years of teaching experience in various religious fields and has been serving as Imam and Quran teacher at Dianat Mosque of Virgin in New Jersey uh, since February of 2018. Forgive me for my pronunciations, brothers and sisters, but uh, I am very honored to welcome him and his segment right now. Bismillah. Thank you for more warm welcome. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا 
Thank you so much, uh, Sheikh Ahmed, for that beautiful recitation of those uh, uh, ayat. Barakallahu feek. May Allah reward you. Yajalha fi mizan hasanatak on these, this blessed day and during this blessed month. Again, I want to remind everyone and myself to not squander this day and to remember the ayah that he just mentioned. Wa'tasimu bi hablillahi jami'an wa la tafarraqu. Is to hold fast to the rope of Allah and to not separate and to not segment. Our brothers and sisters from all over the world, there's need everywhere. And there's opportunity everywhere for us to answer their call, inshallah. Uh, and with that said, I'm reminding you again to please donate irusa.org slash give to call the number, make a donation right now, or to text to 50155, IRUSA to 50155, and make your zakat, your sadaqah, to Mali, Niger, Insha'Allah, those are the focus today, but anywhere we will accept your zakat will be accepted today, everything, and it's the best opportunity, insha'Allah. I'd like to transition now 
to our first speaker of the evening, inshallah, that we're all looking forward to hearing from, which is uh, Imam Khalid Latif. Uh, Imam Khalid Latif is the executive director and chaplain for the Islamic Center at New York University. In 2005, Imam Khalid was appointed the first Muslim chaplain at NYU. In 2006, Imam Khalid was appointed the first Muslim chaplain at Princeton University. It is uh, my honor and privilege to introduce him and his segment right now, inshallah. So, bismillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Bismillah. Bismillah. Walhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thank him, we praise him, we glorify him. We beseech him to send his choicest salutations upon his most beloved sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and upon all those who choose to tread in his path until the last day. Alhamdulillah, we find ourselves in most auspicious moments at this time. The reality of the barakah, the blessing that is in these final days and nights of Ramadan are things that we should not let be escaped by any one of us. We should take full advantage of because they're there for us as much as they are for anyone else. Moments that are not just about what they are in and of themselves in the present, but moments that are so powerful, the magnitude that they encompass can inform every moment that we experience beyond this one, both in the sense of our existence in this realm of worldly existence and the existences that we still have yet to experience. May Allah make us people of his paradise. You want to strive to be a part of all of these gatherings as best as you can. And to understand that it is for you more than anyone else. Gatherings that have such a unique aspect to them that can serve as a real source of healing for so many of us who find ourselves in just exhaustion, in need of replenishment, in need of a rejuvenation of our souls. In these last nights of Ramadan, gatherings unlike any other time of the year are taking place. You and I should make sure that we do our best to be a part of them. Gatherings are taking place in which no individual is turned away. The rich, the poor, the strong, the weak, young and old, male and female, skins of all color, complexions of every shade. Gatherings that serve as reminders of and truly encompass the presence of the divine. No one is left out and everyone is welcomed in, including me, including you. Men and women from all walks of life remove from themselves the shackles of the dunya, the materialistic existence, and for a moment seek to feed only their souls, only their spirits. The pursuit of the world becomes a fleeting thought, and in its place is the pursuit of a tranquility and contentment that can never be satisfied by the possession of anything that is worldly. Titles and ranks and social class are left at the door. You and I, we simply stand as ourselves. And the worth of our standing is not assessed by anything other than the heart that we bring and how willing we are to let its presence define the moment instead of a tyrannical ego, a nafs that is unrelenting, that we have battled now for almost a month's time prior to this moment. Hearts, they will definitely tremble, and tears, they will be shed, and bodies will feel a sense of strength unlike anything other, as they are now relenting towards a soul that they no longer control yields them, not weakness, but a power unlike anything that's ever been experienced before. And fundamentally, what it is evidencing is that indeed, in the remembrance of Allah, do our hearts find rest. I don't know what the last year has been like for you, but I know 
that until I was in Ramadan, I didn't know how badly I needed it. A sense of just exhaustion, tiredness, days filled with all kinds of trauma, illness, death, news of what is happening to our sisters and brothers in India and news of what is happening to our sisters and brothers in Myanmar and news of what is happening to our sisters and brothers in China and news of what is happening in this given moment right now to our brothers and sisters in Jerusalem. News of pain, news of difficulty, news of real strife. And the absorption of it, the consumption of it, is something that can have a toll on the inward. And in the rest of the calendar year, we find ourselves in places where the reality is that the dunya seeks to now bombard us with the recognition that come to us and what you will need in terms of real satisfaction, we will provide to you. But the soul, it knows that that's not the case once it's tasted what Ramadan can offer uniquely. And a recognition of the word of our Messenger وسلم, being more than true. That true richness is not having an abundance of things of this earth, but true richness is having a richness of your soul. And where I can take on the challenges of the world is to not find meaning through the world in and of itself as a source of my healing. But to understand that everything that is created has a creator. And where I can embrace now the reality that what I need to be is not an abd of anything else, but the source of my healing is the source of all healing. And to simply connect to a God that believes in me, that is not just watching me, but watching over me. A God who loves you and I more than a mother loves his child. A God who has not given to us the beauty of this deen for his gain and his benefit. Azawjal. He is ghani. He is free of need. That everything in creation is an abd. We are inherently dependent on others in order to exist. And Allah Zawjal alone is the one that is not reliant on anything. And in these nights, that healing that you seek, I can promise you, can be found by taking a look at the world within you and allowing for yourself to be open to exploring it, navigating it in the gatherings of these nights that are only found in this month of Ramadan. May Allah make us from amongst those who seek out witness and benefit from Laylatul Qadr. It can be hard and it's okay to say that things get hard. Things can be heavy and it's okay to say that they're heavy. But to understand that with the difficulty and the heaviness and the hard parts of life, they exist now to also give us indication of where we find real tranquility. What does it mean to have real light? And where does contentment fit into all of this? I don't know the answers to all these questions that have to deal with what surrounds us sometimes in our worldly frame of existence. But I can tell you that this is not the end all be all place of where we will be. But you and I, we have come from a place. And we will inshallah ta'ala return to that place. And where the Qur'an has told us that our aspiration is to embrace now the designated title of being from the inheritors of paradise. We are the warithun of Jannah. 
and what will move forward is not anything other than that soul that we were endowed with that makes us distinct from the rest of creation. This month of Ramadan, it is embedded as an opportunity of self-recognition. Utilize these blessed nights to just think for a little bit that it is about the abandonment of certain actions definitively. We leave behind food and drink and physical intimacy. We make what is permissible, even impermissible, in these days and nights. So that we are now not just living in abandonment, but we in turn then replace what it is that we leave behind with things that are better. You can take a pause and breathe for a moment and to understand that real contentment is very different from short-lived complacency and satisfaction. And when you can embrace the reality that what I want to be an abd of is nothing other than Allah, because the other things that have me running around in circles during the day, they're not really worth it. They don't give to me what it is that they claim that they can. The healing that we seek, the brokenness that we feel, the exhaustion, the tiredness, it is something that has capacity to be remedied. And where we find replenishment, we find rejuvenation, we find a sense of strength. Don't let it be lost upon you. Don't let it be something that I let be lost upon me. But you continue and you seize the advantage of these nights as best as we can. Inshallah Ta'ala, Allah will accept from us and He will make these nights a means of gain and benefit for us in ways that are our right to take from them. So I would ask you to join me in a dua just as I close out and to recenter yourself to the space to know that you are exactly where you are supposed to be and this moment is more for you than anyone else. That the presence you want is not just a physical presence, but to remove all of the distractions and to be in a space of existence that is open to finding healing in the heart by now being present through the heart and letting it be sovereign of the body so it receives all of the baraka that these nights uniquely offer to us so if we can turn to our lord in a moment of prayer inshallah ta'ala allah azawajal will accept from us and give to us even better than what it is that we are asking of him allahumma ameen اللهم لك الحمد كما ينبغي لوجهك وعظيم سلطانك لك الحمد حمدا طاهرا طيبا مباركا فيه لا يوم الدين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد في الأولين وفي الآخرين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاف عنا يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم جعلنا من المخلصين اللهم جعلنا من المخلصين اللهم جعلنا من المخلصين We begin this supplication in your name, Ya Allah, and beseech you to send your choicest salutations upon your most beloved sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. We ask that you shower your infinite mercy upon this gathering, granting each and every one who is present here in and our loved ones only the best in this world and the best in the next. We ask, Ya Allah, that if all of us are meant to be together only at this time, at this place, whether we are young or old, male or female, regardless of our race, our ethnicity, our social class, our country of origin, our cultural heritage, 
whether we are Muslim or come from a different walk of life, Ya Rabbi, if our individual hearts are meant to be in the presence of all other hearts that are gathered here, only at this time, at this place, then gather us all together again in the best of places in the world beyond this one. Ya Allah, Ya Alim, knower of all things, you who has known each of us before we even knew ourselves, help us through this month of Ramadan to know ourselves better. Help us through this blessed month to know our strengths and to live by them to know our character and how to increase it, to know our pains and how to heal them, to know our value and how to share it, to know our blessings and how to be grateful for them, to know our wants and to see where they conflict with our needs, to know our shortcomings and how to confront and defeat them, to know how to really forgive all those who have wronged us and to actually forgive them, to know how to seek forgiveness from those that we have wronged and to then go out and seek it, to know what charity is by being generous with our wealth and our time, to know what integrity is by being honest and truthful, and to know what goodness is by extending our hands without qualification to all those who are in need. Help us through this blessed month to know who it is that we are and not let the people we are today be afraid any longer to meet the people we can be tomorrow. And through this blessed month, Ya Rabbi, Help us to know you and your mercy, to know you and your love. Make us from amongst those who live with true contentment every day of our lives and grant us an abode in the place of ultimate contentment in the world beyond this one. Allow for our beings to be filled with self-love that we can go out and share with others rather than a love of ourselves that keeps us from being everything that we are able to be. When our hearts are heavy and we are filled with darkness, bring people to us who illuminate us through kindness, compassion, and love. Make us always the reason that people have hope in this world and never the reason that people might dread it. Help us to know the realities of those that are around us by overcoming whatever it is that exists within us that keeps us away from one another. Through this month of Ramadan, perfect us inwardly so that we are victorious in the battle that is taking place every day for control of our hearts. Give us victory over our selfishness and remove from within us any feelings of arrogance or racism. Increase us in brotherhood and sisterhood so that we might together take on every challenge that we individually face and together celebrate every success and achievement. Give us hearts that feel anger whenever one of our sisters are abused and the confidence and compassion needed to build for her the services and shelter she's in need of. Give us hearts that feel sadness when any one of us loses a loved one and the gentleness and mercy needed to be there for them fully. Give us hearts that feel joy whenever any one of us succeeds and the love and hope needed to celebrate that achievement. Give us hearts that are not lost in the pursuit of this world, but hearts that are bold enough to be drawn to the world beyond this one. Let our rage be only at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people, so that we will work for justice, equality, and peace. Let our tears shed only for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and conflict, so that we will reach out our hands to comfort them and change their pain into joy. And let our successes be many, Ya Rabbi, as we make a difference in this world by doing the things which others say cannot be done. Make us those who use our strength, our power, our sheer will and determination to break down the walls of inequity, injustice and oppression that confine so many today. Help us to truly be those who come together on principles of truth, patience and mercy so that we can actually do for others what we have the ability to do. Inspire us to build the shelters and clinics that our neighbors are in need of. Inspire us to take in the orphans and children that the world has forgotten. Inspire us to be generous and honest people of integrity and sound character. Inspire us to live our Islam in such a way that it brings benefit to all those who are around us. Send us reminders always of what true contentment really is. And let us never be those who sacrifice the fulfillment of our needs by chasing after the complacent desires of our wants. Help us to see this world always through hearts that have benefited from Ramadan, 
to see the goodness in all those who are around us and to never be those who elevate ourselves by denigrating others and to see the goodness within us as well. To see the benefit in any challenge that comes our way and to never pass on a gift that can only be acquired through real patience and perseverance. Help us to silence fear and abolish anxiety, to overpower indifference and break away from greed, to eliminate arrogance and defeat racism, to be bold enough to ask of you to make us those who only do that which is good. Make us those who find real peace and real love, Ya Allah, and not just the semblance of it. Those who give real peace and real love, and not just the facade of it. Make our motivation always selflessness, not selfishness, sincerity, and never self-centeredness. Give us the courage to express gratitude and appreciation, to seek forgiveness from those that we have wronged, to let those that we love know that we love them, and never let any one of us believe that we are not loved. Give us the strength to stand again after we have fallen, to understand that we will make mistakes. Grant us the wisdom to learn from our failings and the humility to truly gain from our successes. For any pain and torment that we might have faced through it, give us ease, understanding, and facility. For any suffering that we have sustained, bring to us from it understanding and strength of healing. Grant us always a life that is filled with the wellness of our minds, our bodies, our spirits, and our hearts. Make this month of Ramadan a month of rejuvenation for us, a month of renewal for us, a month of replenishment. It is not our stomachs that are hungry, nor our throats that are thirsty, but our hearts are parched and long to be revitalized. Grant us both in and through the remaining days of this beautiful month and the nights of it as well as every tomorrow that we are in this dunya, a much-needed peace that we long for, even if we don't realize it. And throughout our time in this worldly existence, Ya Rabb, help us to make decisions through our hearts and not ever at their expense. Put into our hearts a desire for nothing less but to take from this Ramadan all that it is that we can and remove from our hearts anything that distracts us from it. Make us those who seek out witness and benefit from Laylatul Qadr. And in our standings in the nights, in our standing of this night, help us to remember all those who are forgotten, whether by us alone or the world around us. Give us the energy to stand into the night and the sincerity to make dua for all who are special to us. Through these nights of Ramadan, Ya Allah, increase us in our Islam. Through these nights of Ramadan, increase us in our Iman. Through these nights of Ramadan, increase us in our Ihsan. Make the Quran our guide and grant us a deep understanding of it. Make the Sunnah our goal, both inward and outward aspects of it. And make our prayer our anchor, granting us the true sweetness that Salah and Dua only can. Make the best of our deeds the last of our deeds, and let us not leave this world other than in a state that is most pleasing to you. For a moment now, just before we conclude this prayer, I want you to take a moment and look within yourself. Close your eyes and open the rest of your sensory perception to a heart that has experienced Ramadan now for almost a month's time. Look within yourself and make dua to your God for those who are special to you, for those who find themselves in crisis in this world, for those who are waiting to find a special place in your prayers. Ensure that within your duas you are including mention of yourself, that Allah makes you and I people of his Jannah and that we are able to meet him having tried our best to fulfill the purpose for which he created us. But take a short moment now to just make whatever dua your heart is calling you to.
and then we will conclude our collective prayer on this blessed night. <clears throat> ya Allah accept our dua Ya Allah accept our dua Ya Allah accept our dua Ya Allah by the barakah of this gathering accept our dua Ya Allah by the barakah of these nights in this month accept our dua Ya Allah by the presence of the righteous that are here accept our dua Ya Allah by the sincerity of the most sincere that are here accept our dua Ya Allah, bless us in this month of Ramadan and make us those who take from all of the unique blessings of these nights and help us to gain from it always. Accept from us all of our actions that we have undertaken in this blessed month and help us, Ya Rabbi, to carry the lessons from it forward in our remaining days in this world. Protect us always from hearts that are not humble tongues that are not wise, and eyes that have forgotten how to cry. Forgive us for our shortcomings and guide and bless us all. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samyul alim. Wa tub alayna ya maulana innaka anta tawabur rahim. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khari khalkihi muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahmeen. Jazakumullah khair. May Allah bless all of you and your loved ones and accept from us. And may he make us from amongst those who witness Laylatul Qadr. Wallahu ta'ala alam wa billahi tawfiq. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. Wow. Uh, wa alaikum as wa rahmatullah. Uh, what can I say? Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you Imam Khalid for that beautiful reminder and that remarkable dua and that raw emotion uh, May Allah reward you and your family and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept that dua You know, uh, my dear brothers and sisters, you know, the truth is I'm seeing this stuff for the first time as well And so, um, this is, uh, you know, it's a powerful moment You know, when you see that kind of uh, passion and sincerity um, and, and I just hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts that dua and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, uh, allows us to benefit on this night and to not squander, like we've mentioned, any of the opportunities that he's given us with his bounty and rahmah. Um, and so I'm just going to remind you again, inshaAllah, bi ta'ala, do not forget to add nur on top of nur, light upon light. Today you're fasting. Today you're listening to the recitation of the Quran. You're praying. And you're putting your hands up in dua following Imam Khalid Latif. Add on top of that sadaqah and zakat. Add on top of that the support of an orphan in Niger. Add on top of that the, the feeding somebody that is hungry. I mean, this is what we need to do on this day. Today is the opportunity to stack nur on top of nur bi idnillahi ta'ala. Um, so alhamdulillah, uh, with that said, inshaAllah, Let's add more sadaqa and zakat, but on top of that, more dua. And so I'd like to welcome, inshallah, um, uh, Sheikh uh, Abdullah Marhum again to give us a, a dua, uh, inshallah, just to close this segment out. And I'm going to be transitioning soon uh, to our next segment. Please, please do not forget. I'm urging you, do not forget to donate today, right now. Get on the phone, inshallah, and donate. With that said, uh, please... Uh, Let's start the segment with uh, Sheikh Abdullah Marhum. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah, الذي لا ينسى من ذكره ولا يخيب من رجاه. Alhamdulillah, الذي من توكل عليه كفى. الحمد لله الذي من وثق به لم يكله إلى غيره 
الحمد لله الذي يجزي بالحسنة إحسانا وبالسيئة تجاوزا وغفرانا اللهم لك الحمد حمدا دائما مع دوامك ولك الحمد حمدا لا منتهى له دون مشيئتك ولك الحمد حمدا لا يريد قائل منك إلا رضاك اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا اللهم فيما أعطيت وقنا واصرف عنا برحمتك سوء وشر ما قضيت إنك تقضي بالحق ولا يقضى عليك إنه لا يعز من عاديت ولا يذل من واليت تباركت ربنا وتعاليت اللهم قسم لنا برحمتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معاصيك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا وديننا أبدا ما أحييتنا واجعله اللهم الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا على من عادانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا واجعل الجنة هي دارنا وقرارنا يا رب العالمين اللهم يا فالق الحب والنوى أعط لكل حاضر وسامع منا ما نوى اللهم بارك لنا في أعمارنا وفي أرزاقنا وفي ذرياتنا اللهم احفظ آباءنا وأمهاتنا اللهم احفظهم يا رب العالمين اللهم إنا نسألك العفو والعافية والمعافاة الدائمة في الدين والدنيا والآخرة اللهم إنك تعلم ذنوبنا فاغفرها وتعلم عيوبنا فاسترها وتعلم أمراضنا فاشفها وتعلم أعداءنا فاكفنا شرهم اللهم اغفر وارحم واعف وتكرم وتجاوز عما تعلم إنك تعلم ما لا نعلم اللهم إنا نسألك مسألة المساكين وندعوك دعاء الخائف الضرير من فاضت لك عيناه ورغم لك أنفه نسألك في هذه الليلة المباركة أن تعفو عنا اللهم اعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم اعتق رقابنا ورقاب آبائنا وأمهاتنا من النار 
اللهم ارحمنا يا رب العالمين برحمتك وتولنا بحفظك واحرسنا بكنفك وكلنا ولا تكن علينا فأنت نعم المولى ونعم النصير اللهم ارحم موتانا أجمعين اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم وعافهم واعف عنهم اللهم اجعل كل ما تلوناه وكل ما قرئ في هذا الشهر الكريم في صحائفهم اللهم نور به قبورهم وارفع به درجاتهم واجعله لنا ولهم يا رب العالمين ذخرا عند لقائك اللهم ارحمنا بالقرآن العظيم اللهم اشفنا بالقرآن العظيم اللهم احرسنا بكتابك يا أكرم الأكرمين يا رب العالمين وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. Jazakallah khair, uh, Shaykh Abdullah Marhum, for that beautiful dua and for your recitation earlier. Uh, may Allah reward you. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward all the viewers and everyone that's present with us today, inshaAllah, who's gone through this segment, alhamdulillah, with beautiful recitations, dua, and with giving, of course. And so again, I'm going to remind you to give to those who are hungry, to support an orphan in Mali and Niger. And now we're going to move on, inshaAllah, to our next segment and support, inshaAllah, our brothers and sisters in Sudan, bi-idhnillah ta'ala. Uh, and so remember again, when you have, the answer is, what is it that we're going to do once we hear this information? What do we do with this inspiration for tonight? Do we squander today's opportunity? No. We have a lot more recitation coming. We have a lot more reflection and beautiful reminders coming. So please stay with us, inshallah, as I welcome, inshallah, my dear friend and colleague uh, from D.C., Brother uh, uh, Muhammad Ahmed, Barakallahu please join me on this call so we can uh, get things moving, insha'Allah. Insha'Allah, assalamu alaikum, Brother Muhammad Kipala. Wa alaikum assalam, Brother Abdullah Fadli, how are you doing, Akhi? Alhamdulillah, Allah yisalmak, Allah yibarak feek. It's very good to see you on the stream. It's been it's been amazing so far, alhamdulillah. I don't know if you've been watching, but it's been amazing. Yes, indeed. And I wanted to say jazakallah khair for your efforts. And I ask Allah to accept from you and put barakah in those beautiful reminders that you are giving to our viewers, you know. Allah Azza wa Jal accept. You know, subhanAllah, this is my first Ramadan, brother, where I'm traveling and I'm going from one community to another. And you would expect that one would be tired after all of this travel from going to different masajid, from going to different communities. But subhanAllah, Allah has given and put so much barakah in everything that we do. And alhamdulillah, you know, alhamdulillah, may Allah accept our efforts. May Allah accept the contributions of those viewers, those who are giving, those who are sitting with their families, supporting us with their eyes, with their ears, and with their hearts. Jazakumullah khair, all of you. Ameen, uh, ameen, ya Rabb. Ameen, ya Rabb. Thank you so much, uh, Muhammad. Now, uh, I, I think we should get the chat involved. Um, and so we're going to be asking, inshallah, a few questions, and we want everybody to get involved, bi ta'ala. So uh, let's let's go ahead and uh, let's get these going, inshallah, some of these questions. Um, let us, Muhammad, do you want to ask the first one, or should I ask it? Well, actually, yes, it's on yes, the screen uh, now. So. Yes, so... What does Laylatul Qadr mean to you? This is something that, you know, uh, we know that the odd days, uh, we're all going and we're praying, but what does Laylatul Qadr mean? You know, th that, that the meaning itself, the word itself, Laylatul Qadr. So please go to the chat and give us some of that information. Tell us, you're not, you tell us, uh, what do you think? MashaAllah, the chat, especially when Imam Khalid Latif was, uh, was giving that, that emotional reminder, you know, people were really impacted by that, mashaAllah. And so, uh, I think uh, I think uh, it's going to be it's going to be an interesting evening, mashaAllah, with all of these recitations and reminders. So, thank you so much, yes, chat, indeed. for for all of your involvement, mashaAllah. So, let us know what does Laylatul Qadr mean. Bismillah. Does anybody know? Join the chat, mashaAllah. Bismillah. 
Subhanallah, Brother Khalid Atif, Wallahi, yani, you know, I was tuning in, I was listening to the whole thing, and towards the end, it was so emotional. May Allah Azza wa Jal accept him. And all of you who are listening, make sure that you go and you engage and, and you know, take those raw emotions and convert them into donations for the sake of Allah. You know, this is the time to donate. This is a time to give for the sake of Allah. So, you guys in the chat. 100%. Thank you. I, I, have a, I have a couple of guesses, but I think we have from uh, Abdullah Ibrahim, the knight of power. The knight of power. And I think I have to agree with him. Yes, indeed. That, that yes, is indeed. Cool. Brother Abdullah Ibrahim in the chat for joining. Jazakallah khair. That is true. Let's let's ask the next question, inshallah. Allah describes Laylatul Qadr in the Quran as being. Oh, and then Farah, thank you, Farah, for saying night of decree. Night of decree. That is also correct. Okay. Yes. Laylatul Qadr. Okay. Does anybody know Allah Laylatul Qadr in the Quran as being? This one is a little bit more uh, intricate. Want to give them a Should little, you know, a little hint, you know, better than what? Oh, we have Coach Suzette. Please forgive me if my pronunciation is wrong, but I see Coach Suzette chiming in and letting us know more than one thousand months. Mashallah. Oh, people mashallah. are on, uh, people are on point. Mashallah. That yeah, is actually yeah, the, night yeah, yeah, the night of forgiveness and decree. Mashallah. Mashallah. Absolutely. It's better than a thousand months from An Anna Angela. MashaAllah. 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 Thank, you so Thank you so much, Farah and Abdullah Ibrahim. Let's ask one more question and let's see if everybody's tuned into this one. What event okay. occurred during Laylatul Qadr? Sorry, uh, Muhammad, I took that one from you. Yes, what yes, event okay, so occurred Laylatul Qadr? Bismillah. Let's see. <laughs> this one is a little bit tricky, so they might be. Yeah, a little bit more subtle. Does anybody know what event occurred during Laylatul Qadr? Something that brings inspiration to all of us. So, what is tonight about, Muhammad? What is it's about? Kalamullah, the words of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So I wonder what happened on that night. I'm thinking let's, of an angel as well. Let's give them a little bit of a chance. I think they know it. I think they know it. You know. Inshallah. <laughs> and a coach Suzette again chimes in. Thank you so much. Was that uh, when the first verses were revealed to the Prophet, peace be upon him? Mashallah, you came in first and you came in correct. Yes, right. that is David. Mashallah. He says Quran was revealed, so he was correct as well. Yes. Anna, Anna Angela, you said when the Holy Quran was brought forth to Muhammad, peace be upon him, from Jibreel the angel. Allahu Akbar, that is perfect. Yes, indeed, indeed. Uh, Abdullah Ibrahim says the compass of our lives was revealed to us. MashaAllah. Poetic to us. That's poetic, poetic Abdullah. <laughs> <laughs> MashaAllah, MashaAllah. So, Alhamdulillah. Thank you, guys. Uh, so much for joining us. Uh, Barakallahu yeah, fikum. Uh, my my second. Allah. Yeah. Tfadal, Muhammad, go, ahead, go, ahead. Me. go ahead. I was just going to uh, thank you and thank the viewers, and I'm passing it on to you. Jazakallah khair, Rabbi Wafaq. Thank you so much. And uh, Salaam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, Abdullah Fadli. Jazakallah khair, and please keep me in your dua during these blessed times. May Allah Azza wa Jalla reward you, Akhi. Salaam alaikum wa rahmatullahi. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى أهله وصحبه ومن والاه رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي You know brothers and sisters this is the month of Quran this is the month of Tilawa this is the month when we are engaged with this book of Allah with these words of Allah throughout the month and now it's that time for me and for you to get that charge that is needed, that tranquility that comes with the beautiful words of our Creator. Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned, 
ala bi dhikrillah tatma'innu qulub may Allah make our hearts always at peace and tranquil with the remembrance of Allah brothers and sisters i want to introduce you to this unique reciter coming all the way from Senegal Africa Muhammad Hadi Tori Muhammad Hadi Tori was born into a literary family he attended his father's seminary and after studying the Quran under his father's guardianship endowed with a keen intelligence and an amazing memory he excelled in a large number of disciplines Quranic interpretation new uh, uh, Muslim law oriental Arabic literature mathematics and astronomy Hadi Tori is the first Senegalese to win a world competition in Saudi Arabia in 1992. He then devoted himself to studying the, re and the reading of the Holy Quran until subhanallah, he mastered all 10 readings. So without any further ado, let's soften our hearts with the beautiful recitation of the Quran, Sheikh Muhammad Hadi Tori. والنجم إذا هوى ما ضل صاحبكم وما غوى وما ينطق عن الهوى إن هو إلا وحي يوحى علمه شديد القوى ذو مرة فاستوى وهو بالأفق الأعلى ثم دنا فتدلى فكان قاب قوسين أو أدنى فأوحى إلى عبده ما أوحى ما كذب الفؤاد ما رأى أفتمارونه على ما يرى ولقد رآه نزلة أخرى عند سدرة المنتهى عندها جنة إذ يغشى السدرة ما يغشى ما زاغ البصر وما طغى لقد رأى من آيات ربه الكبرى أفرأيتم اللات والعزى ومنات الثالثة الأخرى ألكم الذكر وله الأنثى تلك إذا قسمة ضيزى إن هي إلا أسماء ولقد جاءهم من ربهم الهدى أم للإنسان ما تمنى فلله الآخرة والأولى وكم من ملك في السماء لا يؤمنون بالآخرة 
غشاها ما غشا فبأي آلاء ربك تتمارى هذا نذير من النذر الأولى أزفت الآزفة ليس لها من دون الله كاشفة أفمن هذا الحديث تعجبون وتضحكون ولا تبكون وأنتم سامدون فاسجدوا لله واعبدوا صدق الله La ilaha illallah. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh Muhammad Tori, for that amazing, mesmerizing recitation. Subhanallah. One part that captured my attention is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Afara'ayta alladhi tawalla wa a'ta qaleelan wa akda a'indahu ilmu al-qayba fa huwa yara. Have you seen him who turns his back, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and gives a little and then withholds? Has he the knowledge of the unseen so that he can see? You see, sometimes we fear to give because we fear the loss. If I give too much, I don't know if I can make it up later on. And Allah, through these beautiful words, is telling us, do you have knowledge of the unseen? Allah has promised me and you, brothers and sisters, He has continuously promised us that I will increase you. That if you give, I will multiply it ten times fold. May Allah make us of those who put our fullest trust in Him and never hesitate when spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah reward you again, Shaykh Tori. Um, all right, to keep it going, to keep the program going, I want to introduce to you the next segment, uh, the leader of our organization, a brother who was passed the torch to help this organization grow. And mashallah, he took that torch and he ran with it. He inspires us, he constantly motivates us, and he has shown great leadership skills. May Allah reward him. Sh uh, Sharif Ali is the CEO of Islamic Relief. He is an attorney and a committed advocate. Mr. Ali has been with IRUSA since 2014 and has overseen a significant growth of the humanitarian and development work in Islamic Relief over the past three years as a CEO. Mr. Ali has led the organization uh, Sustainable Solutions for Livelihood. Here and across the world, with a portfolio that exceeds 150 millions in active programs. Please tune in to the message from our CEO, Sharif Ali. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, walhamdulillah rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. My dear brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum. It is the 27th night, and we're so honored to welcome you to our Night of Power event. It is truly a blessing that we have reached this point in the month of Ramadan. These last 10 nights are special. And the night of power is worth more than a thousand months of worship. The amount of reward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us during these nights is remarkable. And for many around the world, the global pandemic has tragically prevented them from reaching this extremely blessed point in Ramadan. For many more, the consequences have resulted in loss of livelihoods, lack of access to resources, and hundreds of millions at risk of falling into extreme poverty. During these blessed nights, and especially during the night of power, I urge you to increase your generosity towards your fellow brothers and sisters in need. We are supporting a wide variety of impactful programs that are designed to protect the most vulnerable and lift them out of poverty, whether it's through meeting their immediate needs or providing long-term solutions. We have a program to help our brothers and sisters all across the world and here at home. By increasing your support, you are not only helping those in need, but you are magnifying your personal reward during these blessed nights. 
I encourage you to support our most recent campaign launched in India to help the millions devastated by the coronavirus. Every second, an estimated four new cases of COVID-19 are recorded with two new deaths per minute. IRUSA has launched a campaign to deliver much needed oxygen, personal protective equipment and food to impacted communities. Also in Kenya, we are currently responding to the emergency drought that is devastating villages. We are helping households have access to food and safe and clean drinking water. In Kenya, many families rely on their cattle and we're providing veterinary services to ensure that their cattle are healthy in order to protect their livelihoods. And there are so many more programs and you'll hear about many of them tonight. And sometimes it's hard to choose, but through the years you have trusted us. And if you can't choose which program to support, let us decide for you by donating to where needed most, which allows us the flexibility to fund the programs that are lacking resources. Now, let's remember our beloved prophet, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and his example during this night and these last nights, which he increased in his worship and he increased in his giving. And they say he gave like the wind. The prophet did not leave anything for anything, anyone else except that he gave in charity. Let us give like the wind and enjoy the bounty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. May he reward you for your generosity and your compassion towards those most in need. May he bless you and your families in these last moments of the blessed month of Ramadan. Jazakum Allahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakum Allah khair and thank you brother Sharif for that message. Wallahi indeed our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam used to give like the wind during this month and he taught the sahaba to do the same he never hesitated and i pray and i encourage all of you to be swift in your swift in your giving to take advantage of these final days this is the, this is the final days brothers and sisters khalas ramadan is almost over and you know since the beginning of ramadan we had events in the middle east we had events in pakistan we had events in many parts of the world and I pray and I hope that through your assistance, we reach our goal and we surpass it so that we help our brothers and sisters in Africa. So I want you to go to irusa.give, irusa.org slash give. I want you to text IRUSA to 50155 or call 855-447-1009 and go and please donate right now, brothers and sisters. Help your brothers and sisters in Africa, those who are in need, this is the time, this is the time to help our brothers in, in, in Sudan. Uh, inshallah, uh, moving on to the next segment. Now I wanna introduce my colleague and my brother, my Egyptian neighbor, and the man who had the wonderful opportunity to visit my homeland, Sudan, Brother Abdullah Ibrahim. How are you, Akhi? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ya ahl al-Neel, how are you? Wa alaikum as salam kif al-hal, how are you? Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Thank you for that introduction, Habibi. Mashallah, you've been you've been doing great moving this program along. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and reward you. Ameen, Ameen. May Allah continuously bless all of us and bless those viewers who are actually sitting with us, being patient and watching this beautiful program and listening to these beautiful recitations. May Allah reward all of you as well. Ameen. Ameen. Jazakallah khairun. Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Um, <clears throat> let me uh, preface what I'm going to talk about, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, like Brother Muhammad mentioned, I was uh, fortunate enough and given the honor to go and visit Sudan this last October and uh, the floods that hit Sudan. Um, and it's it was the worst floods that hit Sudan for the last century, subhanAllah. And in my limited time with you, I want to share with you some pictures and some images of my trip in Sudan. And um, since my time is limited, I don't have time to sit down and tell you the whole story of each person that you're going to see in these pictures. So what I'm going to do is go through the main message or the main point and the thing that I learned from the people in these pictures. So to, to start off, when, when we arrived in Sudan, subhanAllah, and we, we saw the horrific scenes of homes being completely annihilated, brought down to rubble, we 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 met people that you know through the situation that they're in and the reason why i mentioned when muhammad was talking to me i was saying when i was there
people that had compl had nothing completely. Every single corner that we turn, these houses are completely demolished. People are inside having breakfast, and they're saying, "Yeah, ahl al-Nid, tafadl, tafadl, futur, futur." Like they're saying, "Oh, like our our brother or our, our person from the Nile, come in and have breakfast with us." Even though these people have very little or almost nothing, Subhanallah al-Adim. The sister that you see in this picture, her name is Sister Fatima, and what she highlighted for me after these floods. The, the struggle that, that she was going through um, was, you know, she saw her children being impacted. She and her husband have to, had to send their children to relatives all around the other side of Sudan in order for them to be able to be, be taken care of. And then her and her husband and one of her children had to stay close uh, at this IDP, IDP camp uh, at a school. And one, one thing that I was truly grateful for after hearing her story was you know, the ni'mah, the blessing of being able to comfortably use the restroom. What she brought to my attention was, you know, for, for the women that were in these IDP camps, you know, at night time, at nighttime, that's when the majority of them would go and use the restroom. But through that, they risked themselves, and I want to use appropriate words because of the audience, <clears throat> they risked themselves being abused or being harassed or being harmed um, at nighttime. And there was already cases of that that had, had happened. And subhanAllah, like Islamically from there, there they started an effort to be able to bring in, you know, temporary restrooms for, you know, females to be able to use. And she was truly thankful for that. In this next photo, uh, Sister Safa is with her children. And uh, Sister Safa, she, uh, she, she and, a, and many people similar to her situation were struck by the flood in the middle of the night. She had just put her children to sleep and what she had woken up to was her three boys and her daughter screaming, screaming in the middle of the night. And when she got up, she had nothing to grab and she, but her children, and especially her youngest one, that she said almost drowned and she ran out. And the mental trauma that this woman endure, endured was terrifying. She and other people that were in this IDP camp with her were explaining to us how herself and her children would wake up in the middle of the night screaming and afraid that this, this situation would happen to them again. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eases their situation and allows us to be of benefit to her and people like her. In this next, uh, in this next, uh, in this next picture, uh, the sister, her name is Tahani, her and her three other sisters were born with their ability to speak and their ability to hear taken away from them. And in this photo, Tahani was telling us how, uh, how high the water was when the flood hit in their home. And Alhamdulillah Tahani out of all of her sisters knows how to write and that's how we were able to get the story from her of what happened when the flood hit. And uh, SubhanAllah she, she had written down the story for us and she told us that you know they couldn't grab proper clothing like they were they were you know they weren't dressed properly when they left their home they couldn't the flood hit the walls were torn off the ceiling was torn off and they had to just run. And SubhanAllah when she mentioned that they tried screaming for help and you know SubhanAllah, they were born mute, so they, they couldn't scream for help. And uh, that, that you know, struck a chord with me, SubhanAllah, hearing that, you know, our sisters were struggling in this way. And in this, 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 this camp that she was in, um, there was this other brother. Th this camp that she was in was in uh, Wadramli, Sudan. And uh, this is about two and a half hours north of Khartoum. And the brother in this next photo that you see was also part of this camp. And he had his livelihood that were very close to his home, and they, uh, most of the animals that were part that were connected to his home, ended up you know dying. And this was what was how he made his money. So all the animals died except for they were able to grab two chickens when when the flood hit, and that was all that they had left. And we saw the chickens in there, and he was telling me that it was really hard for them, and especially with COVID going on, they had no re resources to um, hygiene products. And alhamdulillah, we were able to th be there to assist with that and to and uh, uh, with our partner with IR Sudan they were able to you know provide them these shelters these temporary shelters for them until we're able to help them further and when I asked brother Muhammad when I asked him what message do you have for our donors what message do you have for our donors and then he's his face lit up and he was smiling and he was saying he's like what what else what else is there to tell them what what should I tell them he was like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Rahman, هَلْ جَزَاءُ الْإِحْسَانِ إِلَّا الْإِحْسَانِ What compensation for good or excellence except for excellence? And he's like, the, he's like, these people, you don't have to tell them. He's like, you don't have to tell them anything. He's like, he's like they already know what the reward is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he's like, there's nothing further for me to tell them.
And this last photo that you will see uh, probably had the most impact on me, subhanAllah. Um, we were going to visit some of the orphan families in Sudan, and the sister that you see in this photo, her name is Khadija. And um, Khadija lost her father at a very early age, her and her siblings. And they're recipients of um, our sponsorship. And she and her mother were telling us uh, of what their situation was like after their father passed away and how he was the sole provider for, the, for their home. And um, subhanAllah, uh, during the interview, after she told us, you know, she kept telling us, you know, Maga Sartum Ma'ana. And for those of you that speak Arabic or, you know, from Sudanese background, that means that there was no shortage from you, that you, you never made us feel in need after your help came, after the sponsorship came for us. And uh, during the interview, there was a moment where she was telling us how she wanted to become a doctor and she was telling us all the different things that she loves learning in school. And, you know, in that conversation, she mentioned that she loved learning a hadith. So I let that pass. And then I brought it up later in conversation. I said, hey, Khadija, you mentioned that you love learning the hadith. What was the most recent hadith that you learned? And then she stopped for a moment and then she looked up and she said, Man jahada fi sabili armala aw miskin ka'annahu jahada fi sabili Allah. That the one that strives in the cause of a widow or a poor person, it's as if they strive in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know what the reward is for striving in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the reason why this was so impactful for me was hearing the words of the Prophet from the mouth of an orphan. And the Prophet himself was an orphan, ended up, you know, resorting me to tears. And even in the video that you're going to see, when she mentions this hadith while we were interviewing her, you'll see her eyes shift to the left. And I couldn't hold myself. I immediately was resorted to tears, subhanAllah. And in this moment, I realized that the work that we're doing in Sudan and especially with these orphan sponsorships is truly making a difference in these people's lives, subhanAllah. And that, you know, there's no better way to show love for the Prophet ﷺ than taking care of orphans, knowing that the Prophet ﷺ was an orphan. So, my time is almost done with you. I appeal to you to search deep in your heart and find that place of love for our Ummah, love for the Prophet ﷺ and, and love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follow it up with sincere action having that conviction that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that when he when he when you give your sadaqah that it doesn't it doesn't decrease your wealth and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will multiply your wealth even by giving the sadaqah so if we if we can't find ourselves to give or we don't have the capability to do so the very least that we should be doing is making dua and making sincere genuine dua for our brothers and sisters in Africa and especially for our brothers and sisters suffering around the world and our brothers and sisters that are oppressed. And in this moment, in these blessed days and in, in these holy days, I want us to remember one of the holiest sites in Islam and remember our brothers and sisters in Al-Quds, in Palestine. And I want to utilize this with all the sincere viewers that we have right now and utilize this moment and take advantage of this moment to make dua for them because we don't know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept the, their dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help our brothers and sisters in Palestine. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on them and those that have passed there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them strength in their oppression. Ya Allah, all they want to do is have peaceful prayer and they're being denied that. Allow them to do so. Ya Allah, their land has be, is being stolen from them and you're most aware of what their situation is. Give them strength and end their oppression. And end their oppression soon, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, accept our dua on this beautiful, blessed night. And Ya Allah, we ask you to help all those that are suffering around the world and to give them hope. And inshallah, in this last photo, before we transition to this video, there's a group of brothers in my trip in Sudan that were going around from neighborhood to neighborhood. And they were sort of using the back of the truck as drums. And and just singing messages of hope for the people in Sudan. And you'll hear a small glimpse of the conversation that I had with one of these brothers and him telling us that, you know, the very least that we can do is have hope. And if brothers like these that were affected by these floods are able to give these people hope, then realize the impact that you and I have by sending in our donations where our dollar can, can be, you know, spread and help out these people in such a big way. 
inshallah we'll be transitioning to my recap video and from there our brother Muhammad Ahmed will be taking over. Jazakallah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. family. Hope you guys are all doing well. My name is Abdullah Ibrahim. I am the West Coast Major Gift Specialist with Islamic Relief. And Alhamdulillah, I've been given the honor of heading to Sudan to represent a delegation from Islamic Relief USA. Landed in Sudan after, I don't know, over a 20 hour trip. We woke up uh, in good health. Uh, mashallah, Sudan is such a beautiful country and the people are even more beautiful. This is kind of like when you prepare for like Hajj or Umrah. You don't know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to teach you out of this trip. But like when that thing happens for you, you know like you know it when it happens for you. We're here out of Shigalab, Sudan. And like you can see behind me, the situation here is a lot worse than what we expected. We have these homes that are completely annihilated, brought down to rubble, and people having to move outside of the area. So it's two two homes actually together. So there is two two families here. Both families were living uh, side by side. So they had a wall here separating two houses. The wall is gone. We're hearing stories of people actually already suffering from acute diarrhea. Now, this water is unfortunately mixing with the local water supply, and that is a huge problem for this community. I'm in a school uh, in Shigarab, and there's about 50 families at this school right now, and they're using it as sort of like a refugee camp for the flooded areas. And uh, conditions here are really bad. And honestly, like being in the sun all day, is, uh, it's really hard and really tiring. and. Uh, Kind of painful, but yani, what I'm going through is nothing nearly as bad as what all these people are going through. My name is Abdullah. I uh, immediately fell in love with the land and fell in love with the people and fell in love with um, my Islamic Holy family. We're in the heat of Wadramli, Sudan, about two and a half hours north of Khartoum, and we're distributing hygiene kits to some of the families that have been affected by these recent floods. And at a time like this, these items in this hygiene kit are life-saving. One of the stories we heard today uh, was a family of four, four girls that are orphans. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had tested them with taking away their ability to speak and their ability to hear. And um, alhamdulillah, one of them writes. And she was able to write down the story for us and what had happened when the, when the flood had hit. The main problem mm. for this families, mm. they uh, completely damaged. Mm. 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 The essential uh, item. Mm. Where is the the feeding? The second. Mm. Living with Ramli, on our way back from Tanzania, what's it? Tanzania. 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 And we, li we just left Wawisi and went back to Wadramli. The floods that hit Sudan initially impacted half a million people. And then that number increased to about 2 million people. And right now there's maybe 5 million people that are affected indirectly by these floods. Even for us, when we were out on the field, it was hard for us to, you know, be there for as long as we were. But honestly, seeing these people in these conditions made us continue, made us stand on our feet. This uh, past day has probably been the toughest day, for me at least. We went to go see some of the orphans within our orphan sponsorship program. And uh, hearing their conditions prior to the sponsorships and hearing what they go through, what they went through, and how much of an impact this sponsorship has on them and their family. There was this time during the interview where it was sort of you know, cheerful and it was sort of you know happy and we were talking about how she wanted to be a doctor and. And then uh, she was telling us the different, the different things that she loves learning in school, and one of them was the hadith. So as you mentioned, the hadith, uh, what was the most recent like hadith that you learned? She sat for a couple of seconds, and then she responded, and she said, That was definitely a A hard moment, subhanAllah. <laughs> These people, there's something about them internally that um, and they're just so pure hearted, subhanAllah. It's been emotional, alhamdulillah, it really has been. I mean, seeing the, um, the plight of people in Sudan has been truly heartbreaking. Although we, we knew that we were coming to a humanitarian disaster zone, because we haven't seen any coverage, we really didn't 
expect to see the level of destruction that we've seen. You know, it was a very transformative trip for me. And uh, definitely opened up my eyes to the reality of these people's situations. Their hope is in all of you to, to help them and to make the situation better. It's my responsibility to have that same effect on them and their lives and help it become transformative and speak up for them. They say home is where the heart is. Well, my heart is still in Sudan, but it's good to be back home as well. Allah for actually going to Sudan and and being an advocate for for us and for Islamic relief you know Allah brothers and sisters the need in Sudan at the moment are so much that I don't even know where to start and for me you know I'm from Sudan so this really hits home Basically, the average person in Sudan right now, due to inflation, due to unimaginable inflation, they're surviving on a dollar fifty, a dollar fifty, brothers and sisters. Inflation is so bad that a food basket increased two hundred percent in the past few years. You know, when you look at it, people are trying to survive. People are trying to do whatever it takes. You know, I spoke to a few family members who were telling me that we have to stand in line for hours just to get a few loaves of bread. That we have to stand in line for hours to fill our tanks so that we're able to cook our meals or to fill our tanks so that we're able to drive our cars and go and, 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 and try to have a livelihood. Wallahi subhanAllah. We are Islamic Relief, brothers and sisters. We want to help our brothers and sisters in Sudan. We want to give them a chance at a dignified life. And don't get me wrong, Wallahi, with all that what is happening in Sudan, with all the floods, as you saw in that video, with all the lack of health care, with all the inflation in currency and lack of water, with all the poverty, you ask the average Sudanese back home, how are things? And you know what they say? Alhamdulillah. They find dignity in the reliance in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's always the poorest brothers and sisters amongst us who acknowledge and appreciate the small blessings that Allah bestows upon them. Not only that, people there are even afraid to go to the hospital because now there is this idea that there is such lack of, of medical care that they're afraid that if you go to the hospital, you might not come back. Brothers and sisters, like we live in America, and we have the ability to do and be whatever we want. The opportunities are there. But Sudan was under sanctions for 20 years. Only just recently that these sanctions were lifted. And people there, people are trying and wanting a better life. You know, it is said that a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And this is what we're doing at Islamic Relief. What we are, we are trying and we are taking these steps to help our brothers and sisters in Sudan, but we, we, we really can't do that without your support. We need your help in all of these countries, in Sudan and all the other countries in Africa. We need your help in order to be able to, to, to support them. There are multitude in, in West Kurdufan and in Qadarif, these are uh, areas in west of Sudan, there is unbelievably fertile land, but no proper water supply. There is multitude of livestock, cows that could produce milk, could help everyone in the, in, in, within their villages, within their communities, and everyone around. But 
these farmers have to take these livestock and graze them all the way close to the border of South Sudan. Why? Because there is no water, because there is no grain for them to eat. So one of our projects that we're having is that we're asking donors to donate $2,000, $1,000 to $2,000 towards constructing a solar power water system. You see, that area, if they are able to have the water that they need, then subhanAllah, they're able to not only farm the land, but have water in order to graze their animals, in order to be able to revive the, the, the economy in that area. And wallahi, west of Kurdufan and Gadarif, it is so fertile, brothers and sisters. That land is so fertile that it could actually help the rest of Sudan. You see, our brothers and sisters in Sudan, because of inflation, their money is going nowhere. Even a lot of the NGOs, they're saying that when, by the time you're ready to buy something, it's with inflation, the prices already went up. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to help them to self-sustain, to sustain themselves. For $50, you could provide farming tools and seed to farmers. We have about a thousand farmers who are ready, who are hungry, who want to do that help, who want to be able to not only feed themselves, but feed their community. So brothers and sisters, please, if I could get a thousand person, a thousand person to donate, uh, if I could get 35 people to donate a thousand dollars towards those solar power, uh, solar power water systems, wallahi, you guys will have such an impact, an impact that not only will you see in your life, but you will see in generations to come. And this is the night to give brothers and sisters. So please, please go and donate, go to irusa.org and donate towards your brothers and sisters in Sudan. Now, let me keep this moving. I'm sorry for taking too much of your time. I wanna introduce uh, the next reciter, uh, those who, love the book of Allah and here to hear those beautiful recitations. We have Qari Ahmed Siddiqui is a renowned Qari and a reciter. He has his master in Qira'a and Quranic recitation, as well as having a master in Islamic science. He's also the Imam and president of a new Islamic center in Houston, uh, Masjid Khulafa al Rashidin. Qari Ahmed Siddiqui has been teaching Quran for over a decade and he has devoted several hufaz throughout, he has developed several hufaz throughout Houston. Please, without any further ado, please welcome and listen to and give your heart to Qari Ahmed Siddiqui. Assalamu بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ما كان على النبي من حرج
Allah, Masha Allah, Masha Allah. Jazakallah khair, Qari Ahmed Siddiqui for that heartwarming recitation. Subhanallah, the Shaykh kept repeating these verses in hope that their meaning touch our heart. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu thkurullaha dhikran kathira. O you who believe, remember Allah and remember Allah frequently. Wa sabbihuhu bukratan wa asila. And glorify him morning and evening. It is he who sends his blessings on you so that and and his angels and so do his angels so that he may bring you forth out of darkness into light. Subhanallah. Imagine that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during these days when we are reciting and we are making dhikr that he is sending his blessings on us. May Allah Azza wa Jalla accept our qiyam, our siyam and all of our deeds during this month of Ramadan. Now I want you to, to introduce you to our next speaker, uh, Yasmin Mujahid. Uh, Yasmin Mujahid is a Muslim scholar. See, she is a specialist in spirituality, psychology and personal development. She authors two books, Reclaim Your Heart and Love of Happiness. Please welcome with me, Sister Yasmin Mujahid. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri. Wa ahlul uqtata min lisani yafqahu qawli. Thank you for actually joining um, this this really, really important uh, appeal on this really, really important night. SubhanAllah, we are so blessed that we have been able to uh, come this far and we have been able to, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed us to get this far um, in Ramadan. We've had the opportunity to witness another Ramadan and to witness another uh, majority now of the of the last 10 nights. We only have a few days left and today is the 27th night for, for many people around the world. Um, what I want to do today is I just want to remind you and myself to take absolute uh, advantage of this time, to do our absolute best. Remember that the Prophet 
it was said that when he when it would he would enter into the into the last ten nights, he would tighten his waist belt, he would stand up and pray at night, he would wake up his his family uh, to pray. This is the time to really uh, to to ter- to really put our efforts up to another level. And you know, in talking about the what can we learn, what can, what kind of um, jewels can we get from this this final stretch? And I think there's a, a couple reflections that I wanted to share about that. One of them is that uh, we have so much to be grateful for. We often hear, you know, this reminder about gratitude that we we need to be grateful. We need to show gratitude uh, for our blessings. And Alhamdulillah, if we were to sit down and if we were to, you know, enumerate what those blessings are, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tells us, "Wa in ta'udu ni'mat Allahi la tuhsuha." What's interesting about this ayah is that if you were to try to count not the blessings of God, but even to try to encapsulate, to understand, to to, to really measure even just one single blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you would not be able to. So it really, if we were to just take one single blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and just try to fully understand or even fully um, measure how much impact it has in our lives, we wouldn't be able to. So, you know, if we just take a moment and we think about the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this Ramadan, the the um, the ability to, to, to have food, uh, you know, when we break our fast, and not just food, but oftentimes very fancy iftars and very, you know, lavish uh, types of food that we have, the ability to be safe, you know, when there are people in the world who are, as we speak right now, are being attacked, who are not safe, who are even being, uh, such as those in Palestine, being attacked in, in, in Quds while they are praying, that we have the ability to pray in peace, that we have the ability to to, to have our iftar and spend our time with our family in peace and in security. These are all blessings that we have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. And one of the best ways to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to give from that which Allah has given us. That when we give from the blessing itself, that's one of the best ways to show gratitude for that blessing. And it also is one of the best ways to protect that blessing from from being lost. So having that gratitude shown through charity, through giving back, and and while we are in this month, and, and especially in this time of the month, where we are begging, we are desperately looking and seeking for the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the question is, what are we doing? You know, when we seek from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's often this, this feeling of, you know, I've made dua, I'm asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but is Allah going to respond to my dua? Is Allah going to forgive me? Is Allah going to uh, hear and respond to the duas that I have made? And you know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran about dua, it's an interesting uh, sort of connection that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِي uh, No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rather says, um, وَإِذَا سُئِلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي So if your, if my slave asks you about me, إِذَا سُئِلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ That when and if my slave asks about me, indeed I am near, I answer the call of the one who calls when they call. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ When they call me, now the next part of the ayah oftentimes is forgotten. And you know, it's forgotten when we quote it, but it's also forgotten in the way in which we we view this concept, right? We, our focus is often on Allah said that he always that he's near and that he always answers the call of those who call upon him. But the next part directly after that is Allah now asking us for something. Allah now commanding us so then let them also answer and respond to my call and believe in me. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is saying that yes, he answers our call. Yes, he responds to our call. 
But the question we have to ask is, are we responding to the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What has Allah asked of us? See, while we are so concerned about, um, is Allah giving us what we're asking? Have we looked and have we reflected on, are we giving what Allah has asked? And one of the most frequently asked from, uh, one of the most frequently asked you know, uh, commands and re requests and encouragement uh, in in the text, across the text, in fact, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is to give from that which we have been given, is to give back to the creation, is to give back for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Charity, sadaqa, zakah, that this is one of the things Allah has called upon us to do. And so while we are sitting and we are often demanding that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala respond to our call when we make dua, when we call out to him, we have to ask ourselves, are we responding to Allah's call? Are we giving back to those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to give back to? And this is how we, one of the ways in which we respond to the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by giving to those who Allah has commanded us to give to. Who are those people? These are the people uh, who are hungry. These are the people who are who are in need. These are the people who are in danger. These are the people who have been who have been pushed out of their homes as refugees. These are the people uh, who who are who are in need of our assistance. And these are those who Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has commanded us to give for the sake of Allah to help. And so, you know, while we're Alhamdulillah going through our own, you know, personal ibadah and we're going through our own um, routine and our own regiment of, of worship in these last 10 nights and, and you know, uh, the 27th night, let us not forget the immense reward of giving back to the creation, the immense reward of sadaqah, of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his angels, because don't forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, تَنَزَّلُوا الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالْرُوحُ فِيهَا بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ أَمْرِ That the angels will be sent down on that night of Laylatul Qadr, and Jibreel will be among them. And everything they do will be by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. سَلَامٌ هِيَا حَتَّى مُطْلَعُ الْفَجْرِ um, salamun hiya hatta matla al fajr is, um, is, is that there will be peace in that night. Hatta matla al fajr until the coming of dawn, the, the, the fe until fajr comes. So, you know, I think it's really, really important that part of our focus, um, in this last stretch, uh, of 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 Ramadan and of the last ten nights and and the the, the odd nights, is we want Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and His angels to witness us giving to the creation, to witness us helping those in need, giving sadaqa, giving of that which Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has given us, giving of our zakah, to give back from that which Allah has given us. And you know, when we when we talk about seeking the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during this time and, and showing that gratitude that I mentioned, one of the most the most profound gifts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us is the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, of the ability to know Allah, the ability to worship Allah, the ability to have a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the ability to to be a believer the the gift of iman the gift of islam that allah has given you and he has not given to most other people that alone that gift alone we would never be able to encompass and so when we're looking at the you know all of the gifts of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we can't forget the most important of those gifts and the deepest of those gifts. And that is the gift of Iman, the, the, the ability uh, to, to know Allah, to worship Allah, and to be close to Allah. And the fact that we seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness and the, 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 gift, the, the, the gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in fact 
poured, he has, he has poured upon us this Ramadan, his mercy, his rahmah. And that is the greatest gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. He's given us the, 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 the ni'mah of his mercy and of his forgiveness. And you know, subhanAllah, one of the shortcuts to the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to be merciful and forgiving to the creation. That when we see someone in need, when we hear that someone is in need, we become the first, we become quick to, to, to put out our hand, to try to help, to try to give back from that mercy that we desperately seek from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those who are merciful to the creation will be shown mercy by the creator. And this is, a, this is the words of the Prophet sallallahu And inshallah, I'll wrap up with this story, which I think really exemplifies this relationship between how we are with the creation and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be with us. And it is specifically uh, within the, the context of seeking forgiveness uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as many of us know, during the time of the Prophet وسلم, there came a period where our mother Aisha radiallahu anha was accused of being unchaste. And now this, this time of, of the slander against Aisha radiallahu anha was very, very difficult upon the, the family of the Prophet وسلم, upon Aisha radiallahu anha, upon the Prophet himself sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was also very, very difficult upon her father, Abu Bakr uh, radiallahu anha. And what happened is that he, he came to know, Abu Bakr radiallahu anha, came to know that one of the people who was spreading the slander about his own daughter, Aisha radiallahu anha, was one of his own relatives. So a relative of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. And not only was he a relative of, of, Abu, of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, but he was a relative who Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was financially supporting. So when he found that out, all he did was he stopped the financial support. Right, he didn't go for what maybe we would have wanted um, to do at that point, maybe revenge or or what have you. Um, he only simply stopped the financial support to this relative who had been involved in the spreading of the slander against his daughter. And when that happened, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala revealed an ayah in Surah An Nur, and in this ayah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala addresses Abu Bakr radhiyallahu anhu directly, but He also addresses all of us till the end of time. And He says, "Wal yafu, wal yasfahu, ala tuhibuna an yaghfir Allahu lakum. Let them pardon and let them overlook. Let them pardon and overlook." Ala tuhibuna an yaghfir Allahu lakum. Do you not love for Allah? To forgive you and that is the the, the the transaction that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes with his slaves that how we treat the creation how we treat others becomes a reflection of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala treats us in this case it was about forgiveness it was about that Abu Bakr radiallahu is being addressed and being told that do you not wish for Allah to forgive you? Do you not love for Allah to forgive you? So, so pardon uh, this individual. And when Abu Bakr radiallahu heard that, he, you know, his response was, of course, he wanted and loved the forgiveness of Allah. And so not only did he continue that financial support to his relative, he even increased it. And that is, that is the response of people who understand that how we treat the creation is, is, is absolutely connected to how Allah will treat us. And so if we want the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this Ramadan, if we want the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these final nights of Ramadan, then we have to be a source of mercy for others. We need to try to help others in need, be a source of compassion and a source of mercy. And then inshallah, inshallah, we will receive that compassion and that mercy, not from another human being, but from the Lord of the world, from the most compassionate 
the most merciful. Remember what the Prophet ﷺ said about the ones who take care of orphans. Remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that these people who take care of orphans and widows, that these people will be with Allah, will be with the Prophet ﷺ in the hereafter, just like this. And he put his fingers, connecting two fingers with no space in between. So to show, to illustrate how close those individuals who took care of the orphans and who took care of, of the widows will be with with the Prophet ﷺ in the hereafter. And so I urge you all to seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to seek the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by being merciful to the orphans, by being merciful to the widows, by giving back to those in need and helping when help is required. Aquli qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum innahu ghafurun rahim subhanaka Allah wa bihamdak أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك جزاكم الله خيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Those who are merciful to the creation receive the mercy of the creator MashaAllah Jazakallah khair Beautiful words Sister Yasmin Jazakallah khair for the wonderful reminder and thank you for advocating for us throughout the month of Ramadan Allah, I know it hasn't been easy for you know, but may Allah Azza wa Jalla reward you and may Allah accept from you uh, for inspiring hearts. Jazakumullah khairan. Wa iyyakum. Jazakumullah khairan. Now, brothers and sisters, our time, your time with me, my time with you is almost over. But before we conclude, we, I want you to listen to some beautiful da'a. This is the time, this is the month of not only reciting the Quran, but these are the days of dua where we sit and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins and to forgive everything that we have done throughout the year. But before we go and we listen to this beautiful dua, I want to remind you, brothers and sisters, $43 a month. That's all it takes in order to bring joy into the life of an orphan. Just $43 a month. Please go to irusa.org slash give and go and sponsor an orphan. Help those who are in need so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts so much benefit and rewards you tremendously in your life and puts that blessings that you need in your life. Without any further ado, let's listen to some beautiful da'a from Sheikh Muhammad Hadi Tori. <laughs> وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا واصرف عنا شر ما قضيت فإنك تقضي ولا يقضى عليك إنه لا يذل من واليت ولا يعز من عاليت تباركت ربنا وتعاليت فلك الحمد على ما قضيت ونستغفرك ونتوب إليك اللهم يا من أظهر الجميل وستر القبيح يا من لم يؤاخذ بالجريرة ولم يهتك الستر اللهم يا عظيم العفو يا حسن التجاوز اللهم يا واسع المغفرة اللهم يا باسط اليدين بالرحمة اللهم يا سامع كل نجوى يا منتهى كل شكوى اللهم يا كريم الصفح اللهم يا عظيم المن اللهم يا مقيل العثرات اللهم يا مبتدئا بالنعم قبل استحقاقها يا ربنا يا سيدنا يا مولانا يا غاية رغبتنا نسألك اللهم ألا تشوه خلقتنا ببلاء الدنيا ولا بعذاب النا 
النار اللهم إنا عبيدك بنو عبيدك بنو إمائك نواصينا بيدك ماض فينا حكمك عدل فينا قضاءك نسألك بكل اسم هو لك سميت به نفسك أو أنزلته في كتابك أو علمته أحدا من خلقك أو استأثرت به في علم الغيب عندك أن تجعل القرآن العظيم ربيع قلوبنا اجعل القرآن العظيم ربيع قلوبنا ونور أبصارنا وشرح به صدورنا وجلاء أحزاننا وذهاب غمومنا وهمومنا وقائدنا وسائقنا إلى جناتك جنات النعيم ودارك دار السلام مع الذين أنعمت عليهم من النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين وحسن أولئك رفيقا ذلك الفضل من الله وكفى بالله عليما اللهم إنا نسألك من الخير كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم ونعوذ بك من الشر كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم ونسألك من كل خير ما تعلم ونعوذ بك من كل شر ما تعلم وأنت علام الغيوب اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك آمين 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 May Allah Azza wa Jal accept from all of us what a beautiful dua from Sheikh Muhammad Tori Brothers and sisters, our time is almost done and uh, I wanted to give you one last reminder brothers and sisters that as Ramadan is coming to an end Please do not forget to support us with your zakat and with zakat al-fitr. As you know, Islamic Relief, the work that we do requires your assistance and your support and your donation and your generosity. So make sure, please, do not forget us when it comes to your zakat. And remember that zakat al-fitr is $10 per individual. That is $10 to bring happiness to someone who otherwise they will be home not knowing what to do with their life, not knowing what to eat. So make sure that you give zakat al-fitr, that you help those who are in need. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts so many blessings and blesses your life and blesses your kids and blesses everything that you do. Now, inshallah, we're going to transition from Sudan to our brothers in Ethiopia, Somalia, and Kenya with brother Muhammad Awad. Assalamu alaikum, akhi. How are you, brother Muhammad? Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullah wa barik fiqh Muhammad, uh, my friend, my Zol from Sudan. It was amazing listening to you, uh, telling the communities and everybody watching across the world about this. Wa barik fiqh, Habib. Barakallah fiqh, Akhi. Barakallah fiqh. How are you, Akhi, today, man? Subhanallah, I'm just hearing about what's happening in Palestine, you know, and may Allah make it easy for our brothers there, you know. 
we are Islamic relief. We are not, we're helping. We are one ummah. We are one ummah that we stand together no matter where we are, no matter what place, we are all standing as one ummah and we make dua to each other. So may Allah Azza make it just like right now. This is my, uh, I was advocating for Sudan. May Allah Azza wa make it easy for our brothers in Palestine as well. Ameen, Ameen. Jazakallah khair for your dua and for the whole ummah to make dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy on, on all the brothers and sisters around the world that are struggling, including Palestine uh, and everybody that we're, we're talking about today. In, in Africa, in Sudan, in Chad, in Mali, in Malawi, in, uh, in Ethiopia, in Kenya. Uh, anyways, let's, uh, inshallah, we'll, we'll do another dua coming up soon. Right now, we have a, a really beautiful engagement exercise right now. So we're going to ask everybody a couple of questions. So uh, we want everybody to make sure you type your answers quick. I'm going to read the first questions, uh, Muhammad, inshallah. Laylatul Qadr laughs between which two times? Again. Laylatul Qadr last between which two times? That should be an easy one, guys. Come on now. Let's see. All right, getting some answers. Bismillah. Bismillah, Bismillah. I'm waiting for them. We have Sister Again, Wafa saying, Ya Allah. Oh, yeah, she's definitely saying, yeah, Allah, she said the page and people are donating. Uh, Sister Wafa, of course, she's always uh, doing great work. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept her efforts. Everybody try yeah. as much as you can. So again, Laylatul Qadr is between which two times? Brother Odera says Maghrib and Fajr. You got it right, mashallah. <laughs> I wonder where Brother Odera is. Yes, where are you from, Brother Odera? I'm having a hard time saying his last name. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Did I say it right? I'm not sure. So next question. Okay. Let, when let me do this. Exactly exactly hold on, hold on. You can't take all of them. Hold on, hold on. The next one is mine. Right, you right, can't right. take all of them. Come on. Take this me. Is <laughs> when exactly? When exactly is Laylatul Qadr? When exactly is Laylatul Qadr? We're waiting for some of the answers to come. He says, uh, Brother Odera says, yeah, Alhamdulillah. So you actually pronounce it correct. So Alhamdulillah. Like Barik Fee, Brother Odera is right now. I'm in Dallas as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your efforts. My brother is Nigerian from Dallas. So we got some answers from Coach Suzette in the last 10 days of Ramadan. Muhammad Qanawati, Allah barik fiq in Florida, saying Allahu A'lam. Brother Odera here in Dallas, Allahu A'lam. And the correct answer is Allahu A'lam. Allah knows best. We know it's in the 10 nights, but we're not sure exactly which one it is. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept. And if it is tonight, we ask Allah that it is tonight. Let's take advantage of it. Bismillah. Yes, indeed, indeed. Now, yes. I will say Amen. my farewells Thank to all of you. What did, what did he say, Akhi? We have Sister Angela as well answering a lie about fiha. We have one more question, uh, Muhammad, before we uh, we sign off with you. We have to do this together, so I want you to read yes, the yes, last question as well. Okay, inshallah. So the last question is, Surah Al-Qadr is what number surah in the Quran? Surah Al-Qadr? Is what number surah in the Quran? Everybody That's a tough one. A lot of people are going to be cheating. A lot of people are going to go to their phone and, you know, start mm -hmm. cheating. But it's all good. As long as you get the answer, inshallah. <laughs> inshallah. Like, Barik Fikum, brothers and sisters, actually, surah number 97. I'm going to help everybody with that. Surah yes, 97. Yes. Remember it tonight. And inshallah, we got past it in our khidmah. Or we will tonight, bismillah. So, Jazakumullah khair, everyone, and thank you, and may Allah Azza wa Jal accept from you and reward you, and this is my salamu alaikum to all of you. I leave it to you, Brother Muhammad Awad. Salamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Barakallah feek, Brother Muhammad, and everybody that came before you. Again, this is your friend, your brother, Muhammad Awad al-Barghuthi from Islamic Relief USA, and welcome, of course, to the third segment of the Night of Power.
Inshallah, we're preparing everybody for this beautiful night. And you know the lineup of speakers has been fire. Everybody we've been listening to. So inshallah, the next speaker is going to be lighting the house from the southeast region of the United States in Florida. We have Allah yabarik fi Sheikh Muhammad is Zahid. He's an imam at the Islamic Center of Boca Raton. And he's been teaching the Quran for over 16 years. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him. And he's three years, subhanAllah, he's been at the Boca Raton Garden of the Sahaba Academy. And then he's been in Lebanon for the rest of his life before that teaching. He has a bachelor's degree in Sharia. And he has, subhanAllah, in 2012, he, he uh, 2010, he received his fifth, his hiv ijazah in the whole Quran in the 10th, 10th riwayah. So there's 10 ways to read the Quran. And in 2010, he got the 10th one. So he has all the riwayat packed and he really, really helps his community and lets them listen into his beautiful voice in the different qara'at every year. I'm sure everybody in Boca Raton this year in Ramadan is happy that the masjid is open and that they're listening to his beautiful voice in Tarawih. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept his efforts. He also uh, won many awards in Quran competitions around the world in Morocco, in Kuwait, in Lebanon, in Tunis, and in Russia. And of course, he is Lebanani. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept his efforts. Without further ado, Al-Sheikh Al-Qari Muhammad Al-Zahid. Jazakumullahu khaira. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ramadan Kareem to you and your families. Allahumma ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from you all the ta'at. Allahumma ameen. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم
لا إله إلا هو يحيي رب السماوات والأرض وما بينهما إن كنتم موقنين لا إله إلا هو رب بل هم في شك يلعبون فارتقب فارتقب يوم تأتي السماء فارتقب يوم تأتي السماء بدخان مبين يغشى يوم تأتي السماء بدخان مبين يغشى الناس
صدق الله العظيم جزاك الله خير شيخ إمام محمد الزاهد for all of your efforts and you standing up for the in the communities reading the Quran making your your your, your throat tired the mashayikh really spend a lot of time standing up and once we try doing it ourselves we realize how much efforts they put in to make sure the community feels it in their hearts and from the verses you hear and and fear you hear and fear what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised for specific people and you know Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was telling the sahaba about jannah and jahannam the whole time in mecca just so they had it in their hearts that jannah and jahannam are real and that our actions determine where we go so now that we're breathing it's ramadan it's the last 10 nights we still have a chance and one of the best things muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam do in ramadan he fasted he prayed but he gave more sadaqa he gave more sadaqa and that's what we're asking for you today because we know you're going to pray you're listening to quran and now it's the best time to give your sadaqa because it might be multiplied by 1000 months of reward two and a half months for every minute inshallah right now we're going to transition over to an important project in a country that you probably didn't know we're working in that a lot of people don't know we're working in and we don't hear a lot about in the news but it's our brothers and sisters in ethiopia and i want you to take a look at this video right now to see about the work that we're doing there Hello, my name is Simona. I'm here in Ethiopia, right on the Somali border, where Islamic Relief is running projects to help with climate change. This community has been hugely affected by droughts that continue to fail year after year. Ten years ago, they say they used to have two months of rain. Now they might get a few days and they don't know when it's coming. The impact this is having is huge. The wells are drying up, the rivers are drying up, the cattle are dying, they cannot grow crops. So that forces mass displacement. This village, it used to be just one village, one tribe. It's now become six as people have been displaced from elsewhere in the search of ever shrinking amount of resources. And this is creating conflict. Villages like this that are six now will become 12, they'll become 20. It's not sustainable. This is why we need to take action against climate change now. SubhanAllah, as you see the situation of what's happening in Ethiopia, internally displaced people, lack of water, lack of medicine, and a lot of us didn't know. So SubhanAllah, let's just take a moment and make dua for them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to feed the needy, to feed our brothers and sisters in need. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite and help us and help us and help the poor. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite our hearts to bring us from darkness to light. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us in our hearts, our ears, our eyes, our, our spouses and our children. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on us and forgive us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us grateful. And how can we be grateful? How can we be shakur? Is to give for the sake of Allah. Is action. To be thankful, to be grateful, inshallah, let's give to purify our hearts, to purify our money, to uplift the calamities that are happening to us by giving sadaqah and making sure that we're giving our zakah and making sure that we're helping those people in need. Remember the brothers and sisters that you just saw in Ethiopia that are calling for our help. And now we're going to go to one of the brothers, inshallah, in California, brother Munir Qtaish. He's going to tell us more about this project and to motivate everybody to give, inshallah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah, ala alihi wa sahbihi wa anwala. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Jazakallah khair Muhammad for the introduction. Uh, and for the, maybe some of us will think of it as a difficult video to see. Uh, but unfortunately, this is a scene in, in, in Ethiopia and even other countries within Africa. 
Brothers and sisters, this is the month of Quran. And tonight possibly is Laylatul Qadr. And what happened in Laylatul Qadr is Quran revealed, is revealed. So what I want to do, inshallah ta'ala, maybe take a verse from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a hadith from the hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and see if we can live these, this verse and this hadith and I hope my words are coming out of, uh, you know, there's a statement. I, I don't want you to open your ears. I want you to open your heart. مَا خَرَجَ مِنَ الْقَلْبِ مَقَرَّهُ الْقَلْبِ وَمَا خَرَجَ مِنَ اللِّسَانِ لَا يَتَجَاوَزُ الْأُذُنَانِ What comes out of the heart, settles in the heart. And what comes out of the tongue, barely passes by the ears. I want your heart. Sallu ala Rasulillah. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Before I ask you for money, inshallah, I mean, you come in here to attend an event for Islamic Relief, or maybe you're watching this letter on. The goal, of course, Islamic Relief is a humanitarian organization that we want to help those in need. But, before I ask you for funds, I want to speak to your heart, inshallah ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed one of the, his prophets, Sayyidina Sulaiman, with the greatest army. You know, Islamic Khalif has a, has a theme this month, it's called We Are One. Um, and in and, 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 and Surah An-Naml, there's a chapter called the, the Chapter of the Ants. There's this one verse where Sayyidina Sulaiman, alayhi salam, he was with his army, which is, you know, he has jinn, part of his army, humans, part of his army, birds, part of his army. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala records this, you know, he, he said that Sulaiman organized them and they're marching until they approach a valley that is full of ants. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala records this in the Quran. When Sayyidina Sulaiman and his army were marching and they approached the valley of the ants, one ant, one, one ant, that's you, could be. Don't say someone else or the rich can pay. Huh? Huh? Someone else, no. One ant saw this danger. She saw this danger, drought, food scarcity, water scarcity. She saw this danger coming upon her. For in, in, in this episode, she saw the Ar Sayyidina Sulaiman his army marching, right? What did she do? Did she run for her own? Uh, life should say, Wallahi, my bank account is good enough, my bed is comfortable enough, let me get up, up, up the street, let me go into my dwellings. It didn't do that. It turned its face and went to, to her people and said, Ya ayyuhan namlud khulu masakinakum, la yahtimannakum Sulaiman wa junuduhu wa hum la yashurun. It turned to its community, said, Go, all, all ants, go into your dwellings because Sulaiman and his, and his army might crush us unknowingly. It realized its salvation if the community is strong. If it has its brothers and sisters alive, right? We are part of the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Palestinians are aching tonight because of what's happening in Al-Aqsa. But we're also aching what's happening in Yemen. And also aching because of what's happening in Kenya, in Ethiopia. These two countries that we're trying to pitch and raise funds for. Huh? Sometimes we just lump, lump some things. Africa. But we don't do the same thing in countries in, 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 in different parts of the world. I, Africa has many countries. There's many Muslims across East, West, Central. Brothers and sisters in Ethiopia, in Kenya, need our help. We are that one ant when we see that danger coming upon them. We want to warn them and help them. It's not enough that I'm good enough doing here in the US or in Canada, wherever I might be. I'm part of the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Do we realize this on this 27th of Ramadan? Today is the 26th, the night of the 27th. Do we have that in mind? It's not about me only. It's about we. Not only me. You read Quran, alhamdulillah. You recited, you read Taraweeh. That's good. That's great. But that's not enough. Can we give to the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam? Can we be there for them? My time is limited. I want to share, I shared one verse, one hadith of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. Open your hearts, not just your ears. You want to be among those who are loved by Allah during this month and freed from hellfire, don't we? And we want to do the best of deeds Allah accepts so we can be like, like the, I want to do the best of deeds. Prophet Muhammad says in this tradition, this hadith of his, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, uh, أَحَبُّ النَّاسِ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَنْفَعُهُمْ لِلنَّاسِ That 
the the dearest the group of Allah to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, group of people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most beloved group of people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the ones of benefit to others. Huh? It's not only about me. Not only about me. We. So you can be among those who are most beloved to Allah by making sure you've benefit to others. Sometimes part of that is donating financially. وَحَبُّ الْأَعْمَالِ إِلَى اللَّهِ سُرُورٌ تُدْخُلُوا عَلَىٰ and, and the best of these that you could do, that Allah loves most, is you do something that will enter uh, happiness into your Muslim brothers' hearts, sisters' hearts. أَوْ تَكْشُفُ عَنْهُ كُرْبَةً You relieve them from a difficulty that doubt they're seeing. أَوْ تَقْضِي عَنْهُ دَيْنًا You pay a debt that they, they have. أَوْ تَطْرُدُ عَنْهُ جُوعًا you, you, If they're hungry, you feed them. This is part of Ramadan campaign for Islamic relief. Food parcels. Giving something enough food package for these brothers and sisters. Are we, be, are, are we going to be among those who listen to the Quran and the hadith of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, act on it or just say, oh, so nice. Huh? Can we make a difference in these brothers and sisters' lives? Can I sponsor an orphan in Ethiopia? 43 bucks a month. $43, that's it. That's cheaper than your Verizon cell phone bill for sure, right? If you have Verizon, you're probably in 120 or whatever, how much they, they charge right now, right? Can you take care of an orphan child? 588 bucks. You can pay monthly, you can pay it at once. Can you take care of an orphan child in Kenya? There's shortages right now of sponsoring these, ch these children. Can you give a $200 donation, a $1,000 donation for some of the projects Islamic Relief is running? in these countries. Look into the kindness of your heart. Can I be like that ant? It's not only about me, it's about we. Can I be among those Allah loves the most, so I'm a benefit to others? Can I do the best of deeds by giving? Zakat al-mal, sadaqa, sadaqa, zakat al-fitr. Give, Allah will give you, I'll end with. Whatever you give, who's the first beneficiary? Is you. وَمَا تُقَدِّمُ Whatever you put forth for yourself. I'll stop here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. Bless your health and wealth. And inshallah ta'ala, you'll find it in your heart that you're able to help these brothers and sisters out. Jazakum Allah khair. Zana wa iyaak. Brother Munir, Allah yibarik feek wa yitqabbal minnak. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your efforts and accept everyone's efforts. And like everybody's Ameen. looking at the screen, that zakat al-fitr is $10 an individual. So make sure you log in to irusa.org slash give and give your zakat al-fitr today. Everybody in your house, even if your parents are visiting you, include them too. If your wife is having a baby, include the baby as well, inshallah. We heard Sheikh Yasir Burjas mention that the other day in, in his masjid. Allah yibarik feekum. I was uh, reading a verse in the Quran the other day. And subhanAllah, what you were mentioning, uh, Brother Munir, was just amazing. And it reminded me uh, of a verse. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ And that you won't attain birr. And the scholars, they say birr is jannah. Until you give from what you love. And then I think about me having five pairs of jeans and one of them doesn't look right. Let me go donate it. That's not it. I have to give from what I love, something that I would expect to keep for myself, that I would feel that I gave it away. But after you give it, you'll feel even better. Who here from everyone listening and the audiences around the world feel that you felt bad when you gave? Nobody ever felt bad after they gave or they said, I need that money back because man, your salaka, it never decreases your wealth. And right now, you heard Brother Munir mentioned something about our brothers and sisters in Kenya. So we have a special video about Kenya right now that's going to play with a with a, a former NBA All-Star, one of the best basketball players you've ever seen, and he happened to be Muslim as well. Bismillah. It's, it's going to be something that stays with me, if God wills forever. You had your serious moments. You had those moments where, of course, you know, traveling from this destination to that destination, the heat, seeing what we're seeing, it, it's mentally draining. 
physically fatiguing. But then you had moments where there was, there was humor and laughter. Then you had your little rest and you had just enough, not too much, just enough to say, hold on, <laughs> we got work to do. They said, goal in life is to find your gift. The meaning in life is to give it away. So, you know, whatever Allah has given us, right, we have a responsibility to also give, you know? And, 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 and whether it's knowledge, whether it's wealth, whether it's skill. Justice. Justice? Ju justice? Oh, I like that name, Justice. I like that. We always fighting for justice. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. No, I was just uh, talking to the teacher here and he was explaining to me uh, the history of the river in the back and how many lives uh, have been lost as a result of people uh, coming to get some water. The amount of cholera, the amount of uh, malaria, the amount of dysentery uh, that, that they used to get as a result of that. And because of Islamic relief bringing in the whales, uh, all of those things pretty much have disappeared. This water is clean and it is treated. It is at the door of the houses of the community. So we are very grateful. We appreciate God to pay those people who have taken part. We pray to God, as Sadaqatul Jariya, God to pay them today and day after. We, we pushing a movement. I'm serious, man. We, we, we got to think big. Seriously, this is real talk. We got to think big. You know, I, I grew up without a, without a father, so technically I'm an orphan. And you know one thing, my mother's no longer living. And one thing I never asked my mother before she passed away was how did it make her feel? It takes somebody coming and spending a night or two. What they eat, you eat. What they don't have, you don't have. To really know what it feels like. And they still smile. And we, yeah, we can do more. We can do more. It ain't even, ain't even a question. It just boils down to wanting to do more. Definitely can do more. MashaAllah, now that's a touching video. We can do more. And that was former NBA All-Star Mahmoud Abdul Rauf, who went with Islamic Relief to Kenya and saw the kids there and saw the families and saw all the projects that you funded. Yes, you. Everybody watching. All the brothers and sisters around the world, around this country, in their homes, cooking iftar, ready to go to the masjid soon. You're the ones that sponsored these projects. And there's so much more need. Just like Mahmoud Abdul Rauf said again, we can do more. So let's do it right now, inshallah. Today, tonight, irusa.org slash give. irusa.org slash night of power. Give to our brothers and sisters in Kenya. Give to our brothers and sisters in Ethiopia. Give to everywhere you believe and that you can give your help to. Distribute your gifts, distribute your sadaqa jariya, give your zakat al-fitr. Let's help our brothers and sisters, inshallah, I can't emphasize it more. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَيُحِبُّونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَى حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينَ وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا You love to feed them. The miskeen, the needy, the orphan, the captive. Give your zakat today, inshallah. Just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tied, he said, establish prayer and give your zakah. We tied it together. So we're doing the salah today, inshallah. Let's give our zakah today as well. Really think about it and compete in khair. 
Wallahi, a few minutes ago during this video, I got a call from a brother and a message, $13,000 for a masjid in Kenya. $13,000. Alhamdulillah. But right now, inshallah, inshallah, we're going to transition to the next part of this program, bi-ithnillah. And we have a beautiful recitation coming up from a Palestinian brother in Chicago, Illinois, Sheikh Ibrahim al Dardasawi. He's the Imam of the Islamic Center of Wheaton in Illinois since the year 2015. Six years, alhamdulillah. He has a master's degree in uh, in art of Islamic studies from the University Islamic University of Minnesota. He also has a bachelor's degree in Islamic studies in Indiana. And he's also a computer engineer. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him. He memorized the Quran in 1999. He has the ijazas, the chains of transmissions, and he has the narrations of Hafs and Shu'ba from Asim. Without further ado, the beautiful recitation. Open your ears, open your hearts, put that volume up. Sheikh Ibrahim al Dardasawi. Tfadl Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh for this invitation. How do you say for your body?
ما شاء الله تبارك الله الله يبارك فيك شيخ إبراهيم الدر الساوي من شيكاغو may Allah سبحانه وتعالى accept your efforts and accept your recitation and accept your قيام tonight and in your community إن شاء الله in we in Illinois سبحان الله سورة القيامة was uh, I, he sounds like Sheikh Abdul Basit when he read it and it reminds me of it because that's how I, I learned this سورة listening to Sheikh Abdul Basit over and over again and uh, it reminds us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us of the day of judgment and reminds us about the prayer and he reminds us subhanallah about how the, the human was created. Subhanallah the miracle in this surah that Allah mentioned this through wahi to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 1400 years ago. And it just makes us think and contemplate. And then he went to surah al-Qadr. Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alfi shahr. The night of power is greater than 1,000 months. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of us and everybody watching and everybody that had hand in this event, inshallah, to, to touch it, to, to know what it is and to be a part of it and take advantage of that night. It's just a few hours when the angels come down and are with us and record everything that we do. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make everything we do tonight ta'a and all of these 10 nights. And make us really get the edge of Laylatul Qadr. Again, go to IRUSA.org slash Night of Power. IRUSA.org slash Give. And check out the work that we're doing in Kenya and Ethiopia. Sponsor an orphan today. Imagine if you go on and sponsor an orphan today and give every month. The beginning is great that you started it on the night of the 27th of Ramadan. Maybe you can do two or three or four orphans. It's just $43 a month. And we can do that, inshallah. $43 a month, you can help cover the essential needs, food, clothes, health care, education. The brother that donated, we're helping build a school in Kenya. That's the education for the orphans. And there's a lot of internally displaced people in Kenya. They're from Somalia too. We have Somalia on the board. A lot of Somalis are in Kenya too, internally displaced in the refugee camps. And we're on the ground helping them. The Islamic Relief Office in Kenya is strong, alhamdulillah, on the ground getting the work done. Why? Because of people like you. Because of your donations, because of your sadaqa jariya, because of your gifts, your zakah. So remember, one more time, go on that website, inshallah, and donate tonight. This is the time to take advantage. Right now, inshallah, we have an amazing speaker. Everybody knows him, alhamdulillah, and we love listening to him. And he's going to soothe our hearts with his words of wisdom and motivation, Imam Suhaib Webb. And for everybody that doesn't know, and you probably do, Imam Suhaib Webb is the founder and instructor at Swiss, S-W-I-S-S. And he's currently the resident scholar at the Islamic Center of New York University, ICNYU. Without further ado, Imam Suhaib Webb. Barakallahu feek, jazakallahu khairan for that warm introduction. Brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ramadan Mubarak to each and every one of you. It is an honor, truly an honor to be with you. And it is more of an honor, honestly, to be working and organizing with Islamic Relief USA, one of American Muslims' premier charitable vehicles. The incredible work that Islamic Relief USA does across the globe in areas of sustainability, sustainability, development, and now restorative work is something that American Muslims have always put at the forefront of our mantra as a faith-based community, as a prophetic community. 
and more so, mashallah, in this blessed month of Ramadan. We know that the Prophet was exceedingly, mashallah, generous during this month of Ramadan. I want us to just pull back for a second and center ourselves on how lucky we are. We've reached these last 10 nights. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us to achieve so much in these last 20 days. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided us to His obedience for which there is no greater blessing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed us once again this year to lay one of the important foundations of our Islamic structure, our personal Islam. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Buni al-Islamu ala khams, that Islam is based on five foundations. And alhamdulillah, we've been able to complete one of those foundations this month, which is the month of Ramadan and fasting the month of Ramadan. Now, as we get to the home stretch, it's important that we don't let up is that it's important that we maintain the energy and this enthusiasm, subhanAllah, that we entered the month with. There's a great statement of Imam Ibn Atta'Allah, Man ashraqat nihayatuhu, faqad ashraqat bidayatuhu. Whoever their ending was illuminated, it was because their beginning was illuminated. In the ma'amalu bil khawatim, the hadith says that, you know, actions are only by how they end. So let, let's not let up now, mashallah, let's continue. And I want to share with you some ideas, I think, that can hopefully make these last 10 days and evenings transformative. And another thing before I get into that is for those of us who may have slipped or fallen during this month of Ramadan, don't give in to your insecurities. Don't give in to, oh, I, I, you know, I plan to do this and this and I haven't been able to do it. Alhamdulillah, end strong. End strong so that it carries over with you after inshallah these 10 days. Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha touches on something incredibly important when we think about worship. And it's something which is often present in the ideas we have around worship, but it's not like explicit. It's kind of hanging out. You've got to pay attention to it. And she says that when the last 10 nights of Ramadan would come, the Prophet Ahya al-Layl, Ahya means he would make his night alive. Um, commenting on this, Imam Shawkani says that this is a form of rhetoric, right? That the Prophet wasallam would worship so much that it was, low, he, it was though he brought life to a situation with worship. And this is the point. That we find often that worship, whether it's prayer, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the recitation of the Qur'an, is often linked to life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Anfal, after A'udhu Billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, Ya ayyuhal ladhina aman ustajibu lillahi wa lirrasooli idha da'akum lima yuhyikum. O you who believe, respond to the invitation of Allah and His Messenger to what will give you life. In talking about the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكَذَٰلِكَ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ رُوحًا مِّنْ أَمْرِنَا That indeed we have sent the ruh. Ruh, of course, means source of life, our spirit. But the Qur'an is being described by its main function. And this is one of the, the, the particular characteristics of Arabic that Arabs will often, often name something by what it does. So, ruh, here is a form of what we call majaz, or isti'ara, that the Qur'an is a source of life for you. Its, its, its main function is to bring life to your heart and life to your iman. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this about faith in general. When He says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, أَوَمَنْ كَانَ مَيْتًا فَأَحْيَيْنَاهُ وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُ نُورًا يَمْشِي بِهِ فِي النَّاسِ For the one that was dead and we resuscitated him. أَيْ أَحْيَيْنَاهُ بِالْإِيمَانِ That he or she was resuscitated with iman. So let's talk about, alhamdulillah, in these last few nights, how we can, insha'Allah, resuscitate and maintain the health of our faith. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said 
in a good hadith, in مثل الإيمان في جوف أحدكم, that the likeness of faith in the hearts of each and every one of you are like new clothes that fade over time. فَاسْأَرُوا اللَّهَ تَعَالَىٰ أَنْ يُجَدِّدْ لَكُمْ إِيمَانَكُمْ So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to revive your iman, our source of life. Subhanallah. So let's start with a few things. The first is we should repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these nights. We should turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ And repent to Allah, all of you believers, so that you, alhamdulillah, will be successful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the person who repents. Allah says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ التَّوَّابِينَ Allah loves those who repent to Him, who turn to Him. And revising and reviving and restoring our heart is intrinsically tied to penance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha allatheena amanu tubu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha. O believers, repent to Allah sincerely. And don't be deceived by the guilt that you have. Guilt is a good thing. The problem is when we fail, when we fail to translate that guilt to repentance. The Quran says, who doesn't repent has wronged themselves. So the first is to repent. Because the Prophet wasallam said, whoever repents is like someone who has no sins. And the predominant opinion amongst the majority of Sunni theologians is that when somebody repents, it is almost like they have become a new Muslim. Their sins are forgiven. And in fact, Surah Al-Furqan says, not only are their sins forgiven, Allah will exchange their evil for good. Subhanallah. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that this sense of regret, right, is actually the essence of repentance. So the first is to repent and not give up on Allah's mercy. Even if you've given up on yourself, don't give up on His mercy. Allah says, وَمَنْ يَقَنُطْ Whoever gives up on, in some verses, it says, whoever despairs of the ruh of Allah. What is the ruh? Here the word is used. That life-giving source, the mercy of Allah. That person is astray. So the first is to repent. The second is to love. To love one another. You know why we don't love each other as Muslims? Because we forgot our Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهَ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنْفُسَهُمْ Don't be like those who forgot their Lord and they forgot themselves. It's the plural. Not like me by myself, I forgot myself. But I forgot those who are closest to me. The Ummah of the Prophet ﷺ. Why are we so divided? Why are we so spiteful to one another? Why do we lack empathy for one another? Because we forgot our Lord. And the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned the restorative quality of love and we have to understand in a post-colonial world, loving a Muslim is an act of liberation. It is an act of defiance. The Prophet ﷺ said there are people in the hereafter that even the martyrs and prophets will envy them. And the Sahaba, when they ask, who are they? He said, قَوْمٌ يَتَحَبُّونَ بِرُوحِ اللَّهِ People who love بِرُوحِ اللَّهِ The word again. Who love because of the Spirit of God. Ruh. Al-Khattabi, one of the great, great early muhaddis, he said, why did the Prophet say this? Because just as Allah's Ruh brought life to Adam, when we love one another, and we invest emotionally in one another, we bring life to one another. The third is we want to make this dua that Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught her to say during these last 10 nights, Allahumma. Allahumma is actually invoking Allah by all his names and attributes. Allahumma innaka, indeed you, afu'un afu, 
is more than forgiveness. Uh, Afu means that someone has the right to punish me because I've made mistakes, but they pardon me. So it's like a pardon. It's like a, you know, last minute pardon for someone on death row. We are getting the pardon for our sins as we repent to Allah. Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa. You love to pardon. Fa'afu anna. So pardon us all. We should be making this dua as much as we can during these last 10 days, especially in the night. Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa. Fa'afu anna. Allahumma afu anna ya rabbal alameen. And the last is we should be giving. We should be giving generously. Sayyiduna ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma said that the Prophet sallallahu was generous, but he became exceedingly generous in the month of Ramadan. MashaAllah, Islamic relief is at the forefront of work that's happening all over the world, in India, in Africa, in Syria, in Iraq, everywhere you can imagine. Islamic relief is not only passionately invested, but they also have the scaling and the structure to make sure that our charitable donations reach those who need them the most. So as we finish up these last 10 nights, inshallah, I want to encourage you to donate generously to the transformative, restorative work that Islamic Relief is doing. In this vein of bringing life to our hearts and bringing life to others. Barakallahu feekum wa jazakum allahu khayran wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa sallamu allahi alaykum wa rahmatuhu wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum as-salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Imam Suhaib, barakallahu feek for all of your efforts and everything you said that touched us and touched the communities watching across the world. I wanted to give a shout out to the last person. They said Nazim Bakhch. Uh, just give him a shout out that he, he loved the recitation and loves what's going on. And uh, inshallah, Allah barik feek. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your efforts as well and your gifts and your help to the people in need. Remember, just like Imam Suhaib said, let's give what we can, give from what we love. Let's fulfill our zakah, inshallah, today. And let's be from the ones that the angels write from the people that remembered Allah today. Let's try our best to do what we can today with Salah, with listening to Qur'an, with our standing up in Qiyam, with our Sadaqat, with our Zakah, with our Sadaqah Jariyah, with our Zakat Al-Fitr. We can do everything tonight. Again, IRUSA.org slash Night of Power. That's IRUSA.org slash Night of Power. We're not promised any extra minutes. So let's do it right now while we're still breathing, while we have a chance. While it's, it might be one of the best nights of the year, let's try it, inshallah, Allah barik fikum. Right now, we're going to go back to our beloved Sheikh, our beloved Qari that we had in the beginning of this segment. Our Lebanese Sheikh in Boca Raton, Florida, Sheikh Muhammad Zahid, to conclude our segment here with a beautiful dua. And then we'll transition to the next one, inshallah. Sheikh Muhammad Zahid. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يا ربنا لك الحمد حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا السماوات وملء الأرض وملء ما شئت من شيء بعد اللهم تقبل منا صيامنا اللهم تقبل منا قيامنا اللهم تقبل منا تراويحنا اللهم تقبل منا صالح أعمالنا اللهم في ليلة القدر هذه الليلة المباركة لا تدع لنا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا عيبا إلا سترته 
ولا مبتلا إلا عافيته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا غائبا إلا إلى أهله سالما ردته ولا مسجونا بظلم إلا وفككت سجنه اللهم إنا نسألك من كل خير سألك منه عبدك ورسولك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من كل شر استعاذك منه عبدك ورسولك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم إنا نسألك من الخير كله عاجله وآجله اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من الشر كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة وما قرب إليها من قول أو عمل ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول أو عمل ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من الهم والحزن ونعوذ بك من العجز والكسل ونعوذ بك من الجبن والبخل ونعوذ بك من غلبة الدين وقهر الرجال اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من أن نضل أو نضل أو نزل أو نزل أو نجهل أو يجهل علينا أو نظلم أو نظلم أو نبغي أو يبغى علينا اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من أن نشرك بك شيئا نعلم ونستغفرك لما لا نعلم اللهم هذا الدعاء ومنك الإجابة هذا الدعاء ومنك الإجابة ومن الرمي بسهم الرجاء ومنك الإصابة اللهم اجعلنا ممن دعا محبوبه فأجابه وأعطاه ما تمناه وما أخابه اللهم استجب دعاءنا واشف مرضانا وارحم موتانا وأصلح أحياءنا واختم بالصالحات الباقيات أعمالنا ولا تقطع منك رجاءنا وتوفنا وأنت راض عنا يا رب العالمين اصرف عنا وعن أهلينا وأحبابنا البلاء والوباء وسائر العالمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين
امين 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 الله يبارك فيك شيخ محمد الزاهد may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your efforts and your beautiful dua Allahumma amin on this beautiful day with these beautiful 10 nights from this beautiful and amazing Ramadan that we are in and during this amazing effort event called Night of Power Alhamdulillah remember our brothers and sisters in Kenya and Ethiopia you just saw it on the screen a hundred dollars can help a food box can give a food box to a family for the entire month of Ramadan and we've already given tens of thousands of food boxes so give inshallah sponsor one of them click when you go on the website scroll down and pick a hundred dollars for a food box we're doing it in so many different countries remember ethiopia and kenya in your dua Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we ask him to accept all of your efforts we accept to, we ask him to accept all of our efforts like barik fikum brothers and sisters right now i want to bring in our uh, next segment and uh our amazing sister, Sister Maryam Hassan in uh, New Jersey. Sister Maryam. Assalamu alaikum, Muhammad. How are you? Alhamdulillah, Jazakallah khair. Uh, sister Maryam, we got to give you a shout out. You are on the back end doing a lot of this work. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your efforts uh, with the speakers, with the, the setup, a lot of the back end. We ask Allah to accept your efforts and give you the reward that of every donation that came in. Because the Prophet Sallallahu did say, Adalu ala al khayri and you are leading the person to do good. So may Allah give you that same reward, Sister Maria. Amin, amin, and to you as well. And I'd like to welcome everyone, our donors, the people who are attending, our beautiful staff that are supporting us behind the scenes. Salaamu alaikum, everyone. Um, so do we want to start some audience engagement? Oh, yeah, let's do this. So uh, inshallah, would you like to start with the first question or do you want me? Uh, you could go ahead. All right, so the first question is for everybody. Which angel revealed the Qur'an to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Which angel revealed the Qur'an to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? My kids are downstairs probably screaming the answer. Okay, come on. We're waiting for you in the comments. We have uh, Sister Tinta Tarbawi. May Allah accept her efforts. We have to give her a shout out. All right, mashallah. Mazna Khan, she said, Angel Jibreel, Jibreel alayhi salam, Abdullah Ibrahim, Ruh al Amin, Allah barik fiq. That's definitely the answer. Correct. Jibreel alayhi salam, he's mentioned in all the books and all the religions. There is a mention of Jibreel, Gabriel alayhi salam. Let's go, inshallah, to the next question. Okay, Maryam. so which surah confirms the Quran was revealed in Ramadan? Which surah, Which surah confirmed the Quran was revealed in Ramadan? Okay. Yes. Good luck, everybody. Linda B. Reed for the first answer. That's right, but now we're in the second question. Where is the surah? Yes, so many surahs. Which one is it? How do we know the Quran was revealed in Ramadan? Everybody's thinking, they're thinking, they're thinking. I don't think Google would help. <laughs> MashaAllah, okay. Linda B. MashaAllah, Surah Al-Baqarah. This is correct. MashaAllah. Thank you, Sister uh, Lin, uh, Lina. Um, so Indeed. next question, Muhammad. Yeah, but we know the verse شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس ورحمة سبحان الله هدى للناس And the last question Who descends during Laylatul Qadr to give salams to the worshippers? And inshallah, that's tonight Who's going to be doing that? Who descends during Laylatul Qadr to give salams to the worshippers? Okay Are they the prophets? Are they the angel angels? Who exactly is it? I think my kids are downstairs screaming the angels. So we're gonna have to give them the answer. Oh, there we go. Somebody <laughs> answered too. All the angels and the Ruh al Amin. The angel Amin. Yes, mashaAllah. Very correct. Allah barik fikum everybody. So Maryam, I'm gonna pass the baton to you. 
And, you know, we're leaving the best for last. Laibarik fikum. And the Jazak Malachir for all of your efforts. Inshallah. Thank you so much. Alaikum Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Inshallah, whoever has been here with us, thank you for staying with us. If you just join, Assalamu alaikum. May Allah accept these days from you and put barakah in everything that you do. So let's start with softening our hearts. Let's start with fueling and feeding our souls in this beautiful night. So joining us from New Jersey, the same state I am from, Sheikh Hassan Sadiq, he is a nationally renowned Qari, and he is currently the Imam of the North Hudson Islamic Educational Center. So, Assalamualaikum, Sheikh Hassan, thank you for joining us. Shukran lakum ala hadha tarheeb wa jazakum Allahu khayran. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Inna no. 
في ليلة مباركة إنا كنا منذرين فيها يفرق كل أمر حكيم فيها يفرق كل أمر حكيم نمرا من عندنا رحمة من ربك إنه هو السميع العليم رب السماوات والأرض وما بينهما إن كنتم موقنين لا
لا إله إلا هو يحيي ويميت لا فارتقب يوم تأتي السماء بدخان مبين فارتقب يوم تأتي السماء بدخان مبين يغشى الناس هذا عذاب أليم ربنا اكشف عنا العذاب إنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أنزلناه في ليلة القدر وما أدراك ما ليلة ليلة القدر خير من ألف شَهْرٍ تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى مطلع الفجر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أنزلناه في وما أدراك ما ليلة القدر ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن رب بهم من كل أمر سلام سلام هي حتى مطلع الفجر صدق الله العظيم جزاكم الله خيرا Jazakum Allah khairan. Sadaq Jazakum Allah khairan, Sheikh Hassan Saleh, for your beautiful recitation. Coming in now is iftar in New York City. So, people in New York, New Jersey, the East Coast, please do not forget your brothers and sisters in Africa, in Malawi, in your dua. Please, may Allah accept from you all your good efforts. 
in all that you've put this Ramadan in this blessed month. Reflecting back about what Sheikh Hassan was reading, Rabbina akshif anna al-adaba inna mu'minun. It's the day where Allah will bring us and tell, we ask Allah in the, this day that he removes all torments. And how could we remove these torments? How could he remove these torments from us? It's through our sadaqat. So in this day, we want our sadaqat to shield us from, our, from the punishment. So let's seize that moment and give to our brothers and sisters in need in Malawi, in Mali, in Niger, in Kenya, in Ethiopia. With that being said, let's see how you and your impact, how could you change the impact of many brothers and sisters in Malawi in the next video, inshallah. Yangongolo, Mumbotica, Utimba Tiaguria, Gani, Vanete, Motulamazi, Gelavata, Utimba Meziabo, Kamana Jeco, Ugaya, Gazel of Jacuima, Gakuza, Ugani, Jelwa, Ugani, you only forgot when you have a man. I'm much in the Bagani, the Valme Bagani. Nabati <laughs> Uganda, Uga, Zuga, Chere, Mabuta, the Uzanga, one being. In the Ibrahim Pojere, Pacamon, the These food packs are really making a difference. So Malawi is a small country in Africa where it is suffering immensely from food insecurity due to poverty and natural disasters. 3.3 million people are waiting for your help. At least one person is waiting for your help. So to tell us more about how could we give back to Malawi, how could we assist our brothers and sisters there? We have Sheikh Kifah with us, inshallah. Sheikh Kifah is the um, Imam in the prayer center of Orland Park in Illinois. Assalamu alaikum Sheikh Kifah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Honored to be with you guys on this blessed evening and night, mashallah. Mashallah. So please go ahead. Tell us how could we help our brothers and sisters in Malawi? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa This is the first time actually I saw the video that you guys have just posted on. And... I just want to take it on a personal level. If a bag of flour or a small bag of sugar or rice can make these faces smile the way that they smiled, how much ajr and hasanat and reward we can make for a little amount of money. 
I mean, we wake up here in the States and our kids expect that our fridge is filled, that there will be food, not just that which mom cooks, but then each child, I need McDonald's today, or this guy needs pizza, or this guy needs a hamburger. And alhamdulillah, we are blessed. We have jobs. We have access to money. And we do not hesitate to bring our kids that's what they need or which they admire. And we should. The Prophet Wasallam said that the best dirham that you can give is that which you offer your own family. But isn't these kids also are our extended families? Didn't the Prophet say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, مَثَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فِي تَوَادِّهِمْ وَتَرَحُمِهِمْ وَتَعَطُفِهِمْ كَمَثَلِ الْجَسَدِ We are like one body. These kids in Malawi or any other part of the world, aren't we responsible for them in one way or another? When Allah says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةِ That we are all brothers. So if my $100 or $50 or $200 or $280, the programs that we have, for Malawi tonight is that we want to help people, as they say, be self-sustained, bring them sources of income that they can make honorable life on them on, on their own. You know, if it was the uh, way to help them in the zakat al-fitr, that's the zakat that you should pay. But also you need to think of the agriculture investment that Islamic Relief is doing for them, the treadle pumps that helps them you know, grow these vegetations and plants around them so they can secure food them for them and probably and make some earning or the goats for the uh, households that they can have something that they can make milk and from the milk they can make cheese or sour cream or whatever it is subhanallah these things uh, these kids these families these needy people they need us for for life they need us to sustain their life but let me say that we need them for our akhirah. We need them to secure the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be bestowed on us. We need them to make sure that we are probably in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu when we sponsor an orphan or send our zakahi or there. See, all those people who have donated before, and I'm sure everyone who have donated Islamic religion, regardless of your age, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, you were donating at that time and you were generous at that time and you keep doing it and actually one of the scholars was asked what is the uh, sign that Allah accepts my deed how would I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts my deeds that scholar said Mazidun min al to keep doing that exactly what you are doing so I can tell you that if you are donating today it means it's a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept everything that has passed away from your life. Things that you have donated when you were 20 years old, 30 years old, or 50 years old, regardless of your age now, it's a sign that it will be accepted, inshallah. To be honest, I didn't even know where Malawi is. I had to go on maps, Google, and check what country is that. That's my ignorance. And this is probably something, imagine our own kids. You know, you, you remember from geography classes, some countries here and there, but Malawi was not in my memory, subhanAllah. I had to go and do some research after I received the info from Islamic Relief. And let me say, in this blessed night of Laylatul Qadr, regardless where you are at, in the East Coast, in the West Coast, in the Midwest, in the Southern States, wherever you live in the U.S., this is a night that Allah described as saying, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatin mubarakah. This is a blessed night. And al-barakah in the Arabic language has three meanings. It means ziyada or nawa, growth. It means continuity, al-istimrariya. And it means stability. Every time you donate, Allah will accept. And Allah will reward. And Allah will multiply. But in this night, it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring growth into yourself. Growth in faith. Growth in iman. Growth in your level of connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will mean a sign of continuity, istimrariya, that you're going to keep doing. Because if you are looking for the honor of this night to invest with Allah a precious moment of donation, of salah, of zakah, of any type of donation, of dhikr, of reading Quran, then Allah will help you maintain that again and again. And it is a sign of stability too, sarat, 
you know, we say in Arabic Birka, where the water comes down, which originates from the same root, Baraka, which also a, a reminder that when we give you Sabilillah Azza wa Jal, every deed that we do, Salah or Siyam or Hajj or, or any type, Allah promises that it will be given to us ten times. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Man jaa bil hasanati falahu ashru amthaliha. You will be given ten times. But when it comes to money, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. Mathalu al-lazina yunfiquna amwalahum fi sabili allahi ka mathali habba. It's like you plant a seed. Ambatat sab'a sanabil. It brought up seven spikes of wheat. Fi kulli sumbulatim mi'atu habba. So you have seven times hundred, that's seven hundred times by default. It's not just ten times, it's seven hundred times. But then Allah added, Wallahu yudha'ifu liman yasha. Allah will exceed more for whomever he wishes, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when Allah, when Allah tells you that he's going to multiply it, it is going to be multiplied. And then Allah finishes with a description of his attributes, sifatihi subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahu wasi'un alim. Allah is the all open for generosity and everything else. So expect that the money you give and the donation is not going to be just as is, not even 10 times more. It's going to be more than 700 times. It's going to be more because of the barakah, because of the blessings, because of inna anzalnahu fi laylatin mubarakah of this night. This is your brother Imam Kifah Mustafa here at the prayer center. But my message to you from Chicago to wherever you are, to remember the needy people in Africa because we owe them. Africa, if it was Malawi or if it was Ethiopia, these were the people that hosted the vulnerable of the Arab, the vulnerable of the first group of people that their own Ashira and their own tribe refused to host them in Mecca. But they found refuge. At that time, Al Habasha, Ethiopia, or what's, uh, you know, uh, known at that time by Abyssinia, represented all Africa and which, and, and which it represented. And, and the Prophet said something very simple. فَإِنَّ فِيهَا مَلِكًا لَا يُظْلَمُ عِنْدَهُ أَحَدٍ There's a king, no one will be wrong under him. And this is the time to pay back some of what we owe these people, especially we know what are the circumstances in Africa in general. And this is a great project for Malawi. When you are helping people, giving them goats or sheep so they can maintain their own sustenance. When you are giving them uh, treadle pumps that they can bring the water that Allah made life in it, you know, it is not just a, a, a food package that's going to be consumed in one week and then, you know, it, it's, honor, it's honorable, it is rewardable, but this project that will cost either $200 for the treadle pumps or $280 for a sheep or a goat, this will help them live honorably. And as the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, An upper hand is always better than the lower hand. Although there's good in upper one and lower one, but let us help them be on the one who, is, who have the upper hand. They don't have to be always receiving. Maybe that goat or that sheep or that tree little bump will help them donate. And I'm sure they are generous to their own people the same way we are generous to our, to our own people. I want to wish you a blessed night for tonight. Wherever you are, may Allah accept your deeds and rewards in this Laylatul Qadr. And may Allah decree for us that which makes us always generous, always on the footstep of the Prophet ﷺ. He was the most generous. He was the most generous in this blessed month. He was like wind. It will not stop its khair to anyone. Jazakumullah khair for giving me this chance. To be with you here tonight again my blessings and and salams and thanks for the staff at islamic relief usa may allah bless you all assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah jazakumullah kul khair shaykh kifah for your inspiring talk about giving so brothers and sisters this is very simple you're providing basic needs you are giving people what we alhamdulillah are blessed to have so there are different ways that you could leave your impact. You could text IRUSA to 50155 or visit irusa.org give. Or you could talk to one of our amazing staff who could help you process your donation and how could you 
expand on it? How could you leave a larger impact in this world? You could fulfill your zakat and you could fulfill your sadaqah. And you could also leave your endowment. With that being said, you could start leaving your legacy now, today, through different ways. And one of those ways that Islamic Relief is able to provide to help you do so is through waqf. So let's see what is waqf. How could you leave, do an endowment? How could you do a gift that could help so many people on the long term? It could be your sadaqa jariya. So let's see how could we give our waqf. If you've ever visited Istanbul, Turkey, you've no doubt visited the Salamaniya complex, a grand multifunctional space consisting of a mosque, a medical school, a hospital, a public kitchen, and more. It's one of the most incredible examples of a waqf in Islamic history. A notable example of a waqf today is the Jerusalem Islamic Waqf. Some form of this waqf has managed Islamic complexes in the old city of Jerusalem since the year 1187 and has been sustaining it through changing political climates. In this way, the Waqf can serve as a legal protection for organizations as well, ensuring its charitable efforts to continue in perpetuity. Following in this remarkable tradition of the Waqf, today Islamic Relief USA is excited to announce the launch of IRUSA Waqf, an endowment aiming to protect the work we do for our communities and ensuring we can do it for many years to come. What is a Waqf? In simple terms, a Waqf is an endowment created by a community for the benefit of the most vulnerable amongst the community. How does it work? You as a donor contribute an amount to IRUSA Waqf. This can be in the form of cash, real estate, stocks and bonds, donor advised funds, or any means appropriate for you. A team of our talented financial experts invest your donation in Sharia compliant investment portfolios. The return of your donation funds IRUSA charitable efforts while your original donation is maintained. In this way, your original donation can support Islamic relief programs in perpetuity as a sadaqa jariya. But why should you donate? How does this benefit you as a donor? Through your donations, you're able to support Islamic relief projects around the world. You can earn tax benefits. You can earn an investment back through the trust. And you are leaving a legacy, a sadaqa jariya. To learn more about what we do and how to leave your charitable legacy, visit our website at irusawaqf.org. IRUSA Waqf, reviving tradition, building legacy. Visit today IRUSAWaqf.org to know more about our Waqf opportunities. Before we move forward, brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, everyone, everywhere, West Coast, East Coast, you have the opportunity to be agents of change in this world. You have an opportunity to leave a long-term impact that will not only benefit you, but other people and your dunya and your akhirah. So how amazing is that? May Allah accept from all of us. Next up, we have a very special Qari that mashallah, his recitation makes your, 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 your heart ache to read more Quran and to listen more to him. Next up, we have Sheikh Abdurrahman Sa'deen. Sheikh Abdurrahman is from Cape Town, South Africa. He studied in Al-Azhar for about 10 years in Islamic law. And he's also studied the, all the famous qira'at that there is. So without further ado, Salaamu Alaikum, Sheikh Abdurrahman. Thank you for joining us. A'udhu Billahi Minash بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد صدق الله رسوله الرؤيا بالحق 
لتدخلن المسجد الحرام إن شاء محلقين رؤوسكم ومقصرين لا تخافون فعلم ما لم تعلموا فجعل من ذلك فتحا قريبا هو الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا لقد صدق الله رسوله الرؤيا بالحق لتدخلن المسجد الحرام إن شاء لتدخلن المسجد الحرام إن شاء الله آمنين مقصرين لا تخافون فعلم ما لم تعلموا فجعل من دون ذلك فتحا قريبا لقد صدق الله رسوله الرؤيا بالحق لن تدخلن المسجد الحرام إن شاء الله آمنين محلقين رؤوسكم ومقصرين لا فعلم ما لم تعلموا فجعل من دون ذلك فتحا 
والذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا هو الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا هو الذي محمد رسول الله والذين معه أشداء على الكفار رحماء رحماء بينهم تراهم ركعا سجدا يبتغون فضلا من الله يبتغون فضلا من الله ورضوانا سيماهم فيه 
بوجوههم من أثر السجود سيماهم في وجوههم من أثر السجود ومثلهم في الإنجيل ومثلهم في الإنجيل كزرع أخرج شطأه فأزره فس لوظ فاستوى على سوقه ومثل لو فاستوى على سوقه يعجب الزرع ليغيظ بهم الكفار وعد الله الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات منهم مغفرة وعد الله الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات منهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما ما شاء الله ما شاء الله صدق الله العظيم جزاكم الله خير شيخ عبد الرحمن for this wonderful recitation it truly touched my heart ruhama'un baynahum this is the night of power this is the night that is better than 1000 months this is your night to give this is your night to be the leading agent of change in this world you are leaving a legacy behind through your sadaqat and your zakat and helping those people in need we are helping community development we are giving these people a dignified life and you could be part of that that's the most amazing thing subhanallah that we could help in assisting so many people in africa and elsewhere anywhere alhamdulillah islamic relief has 40 offices around the world and we're able to provide that so this is your chance. This is your time to shine in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and give. Give with your heart. Give for those who are in need. Alhamdulillah, um, this time that we're in, at least here in the East Coast, we are in the night. It's lit, like right now, it's the 27th night. We are able to give it, we are able to say, Ya Allah, we gave to those in need. We could have it in our book when we, in Yawm Al-Qiyamah So, 
seize the opportunity. You could donate now at irusa.org slash give. You could text IRUSA to 50155. And you could call us because we are here to help you, to help them. With that being said, we would like to give a special, special thank you to our sponsors, Amanda Mutual Funds, Guidance Residential, and U uh, UIF Islamic Financing for their support. Also, you could do your donation through matching gifts. Your company could match whatever you give to Islamic Relief USA. So let's see what does Amanda Mutual Funds do that could help you help us help other people. For more than 30 years, Amana Mutual Funds have provided halal investment vehicles serving the unique needs of the Muslim community. Discover how you can align your investments with your principles in a retirement, health, or education savings account, or invest for Hajj. To obtain this and other important information in a prospectus or summary prospectus, please visit amanafunds.com or call toll-free 1-888-732-6262. Please read the prospectus and consider an investment's objectives, risks, charges, and expenses carefully before investing. Investing involves risk, including possible loss of principal. The Amana funds limit the securities they purchase to those consistent with Islamic principles. This limits opportunities and may affect performance. So let's get back to this wonderful night of spirituality. Let's hear Sheikh Hassan Saleh back again with us to give us some barakah and noor and dua for this wonderful 27th night. So, Sheikh Hassan Saleh, please join us with your dua. Sheikh Hassan Saleh, inshallah, is... Allahumma rabbana rabba samawati wal ardi munzila tawrati wal injili wal qur'an fariq al habbi wal nawa نعوذ بك من شر كل شيء أنت آخذ بناصيتي أنت الأول فليس قبلك شيء وأنت الآخر فليس بعدك شيء وأنت الظاهر فليس فوقك شيء وأنت الباطن فليس دونك شيء اللهم لك الحمد كله ولك الشكر كله على نيته وسره سبحانك أهل أنت أن تحمد وأهل أنت أن تعبد أهل الثناء والمجد حق ما قال العبد وكلنا لك عبد لك الحمد على ما يسرته من صيام رمضان وقيامه ولك الحمد على ما يسرته من تلاوة كتابك العزيز الذي لا يأتيه الباطل من بين يديه ولا من خلفه تنزيل من حكيم حميد سبحانك جل شأنك ولا إله غيرك ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بك سبحانك ربنا ولا تقال إلا لك خلقتنا ورزقتنا ومن كل ما سألناك ربنا أعطيتنا اللهم صلي وسلم وبارك على عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم صلاة ترضيك وترضيه وترضى بها عنا اللهم تقبل منا صيام رمضان وقيام رمضان وتقبل منا تلاوة القرآن وتقبل منا الدعاء وسائر الأعمال اللهم اختم لنا رمضان بالقبول وجعلنا فيه من عتقائك من النار اللهم لا تحرمنا ليلة القدر وأنزل علينا من بركاتها وخيراتها ما يجلب لنا السعادة في الدنيا والآخرة اللهم إنا عبيدك بنو عبيدك بنو, بنو إمائك ونواصينا بيدك نواصينا بيدك عدل فينا قضاءك ماض فينا حكمك نسألك بكل اسم هو لك سميت به نفسك وأنزلته في كتابك أو علمته أحدا من خلقك أو استأثرت به في علم الغيب عندك أن تجعل القرآن العظيم ربيع قلوبنا ونور أبصارنا وجلاء همومنا وأحزاننا اللهم ارفعنا وانفعنا بالقرآن العظيم الذي رفعت مكانه وأيدت سلطانه وبينت برهانه وقلت يا أعز من قائل سبحانه 
فإذا قرأناه فاتبع قرآنه ثم إن علينا بيانا أحسن كتبك نظاما وأفصحها كلاما وأبينها حلالا وحراما اللهم أوجب لنا به الشرف والمزيد وألحقنا بكل بر سعيد اللهم اجعلنا وأولادنا وبيوتنا من أهل القرآن الذين هم أهلك وخاصتك اللهم ارحمنا فإنك بنا راحم ولا تعذبنا فأنت علينا قادر اللهم اطلب بنا فيما جرت به المقادير نسألك الجنة وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل ونسألك من الخير كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم ونعوذ بك من الشر كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم ونسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم اكفنا بحلالك عن حرامك واغننا بفضلك عمن سواك واغننا عمن أغنيته عنا اللهم ارحم شهداءنا وأكرم علماءنا وأصحاب الحقوق علينا اشف مرضانا وارحم موتانا اللهم إن لنا إخوة وأخوات كثر سألون الدعاء وأنت أعلم بحوائجهم فاقضها لهم يا رب العالمين وإنا يا ربنا أمسينا لا نملك لهم ولا لأحد من خلقك ضرا ولا نفعا فاللهم اغفر لنا ولهم ولسائر عبادك الموحدين واجعل لقاءنا لقاء مباركا مرحوما اللهم أنزل فيه البركات والنفحات اللهم بارك لنا في أرزاقنا وفي أولادنا وعافنا واعف عنا وعلى طاعتك عنا ومن شر خلقك سلمنا اللهم لا تدعنا في غمرة ولا تأخذنا على غرة ولا تجعلنا من الغافلين وأذن بالفرج للناس كلها من هذا الوباء الذي عم الأرجاء وعانى منه الناس اللهم إنا نسألك فرجا عاجلا للدنيا كلها من هذا الوباء الذي عم الأرجاء وعم الناس يا ربي ليس لها من دونك كاشفة ارفع الظلم عن المظلومين وفك كرب المكروبين وفك أسر المأسورين اللهم واقض حوائج السائلين واجعل لنا من دعائنا أوفر الحظ والنصيب سبحانك دعوناك كما أمرتنا وبفضلك استجب لنا كما وعدتنا يا من قلت وقولك الحق المبين ولقد نادانا نوح فلنعم المجيبون نناجيك ونناديك وأنت الرب الكريم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم آمين Amin, amin. Sallallahu ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Detroit, your iftar time is now. Please don't forget to make dua for us, for our staff, for our people on the ground, for the people that are suffering. And may Allah accept all your good deeds during this beautiful month of Ramadan. Joining us, welcome back, Sheikh Sa'ad al -Dikwi. He will be joining us now to conclude the program, bi'idhnillah. So, insha'Allah, jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaykum, Sheikh Sa'ad. Wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sister Maryam. MashaAllah, jazakallahu khairan. Wa iyaakum, wa iyaakum. Please, take it away, insha'Allah. Barakallahu feeki, jazakallahu khairan, Sister Maryam. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, bismillahi ar-rahman ar-rahim. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. My brothers and sisters, first of all, I would like to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, that he subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this beautiful uh, opportunity on the night of 27th to be part of this program and to try our best insha'Allah to support our uh, amazing organization Islamic Relief USA so that Islamic Relief can keep up the good work and serve and help all those who are in need all over the world. So Alhamdulillah for all his ni'am and bounties and favors upon us and part of it is this kind of programs and opportunities as I mentioned. Uh, second, I would like to thank all of you. Jazakumullahu khayran. All of you, those who attended this program, those who have been watching and they stayed around, those who donated, those even those who couldn't donate. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
bless you all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all your sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your zakat, accept your sadaqah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this night the night of al-qadr, the night of power, the night of decree. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you all, all your family members, friends, relatives, loved ones. May Allah grant you all, all your wishes tonight. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you all the barakah and the blessings and the rahmah and the maghfirah of Laylatul Qadr. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your contributions and your sadaqat and zakawat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grow it for you as a Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Always remember Islamic relief in your dua and stay around. We always have programs. We have a lot of work ahead of us all the time to serve the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all over the world. So again, thank you so much. Barakallahu feekum. May Allah bless you. May Allah accept from you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again and again make this night the night of Al-Qadr and accept all our work. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma ameen. So also I'd like to thank uh, our uh, sponsors. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, aman a mutual uh, fund. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all Muslim uh, uh, organizations. I can see here Amana uh, Mutual Fund, MashaAllah, they have been uh, sponsoring and supporting Islamic Relief and our causes and our programs. Uh, may Allah bless their business and their work. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from everybody. Allahumma ameen. As MashaAllah, we had a beautiful, beautiful, amazing program today. So again, uh, uh, keep up uh, the good work. Keep Islamic Relief and those who are in need in your dua. Keep donating. Keep supporting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, with the first night of Ramadan, He subhanahu wa ta'ala opens all doors of Al-Jannah and closes all doors of Al-Nar. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers us with His mercy. By the way, that does not stop tonight. It stops only at the end of the month of Ramadan. So we still have a chance and an opportunity, inshallah, from now, tonight, especially tonight, the night of 27th, we hope again it's Laylatul Qadr and also till the end of Ramadan. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep all doors of Al-Jannah open till the end of Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep all doors of An-Nar locked till the end of Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also keep all the shayateen, devils and rebellious jinn chained till the end of Ramadan. Basically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves us no room no excuse to do what we need to do and part of it my brothers and sisters as you have watched and heard and listened to uh, this program today we have a lot of brothers and sisters especially in africa orphans widows masakin poor who really need basic uh, help to survive and to stay alive may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relieve them and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from you again and again and again all the time. The sadaqah is one great way to al-jannah. Jazakumullahu khayran again for being with us on behalf of Islamic Relief, on behalf of the, the uh, beneficiaries. May Allah bless you, your families. May Allah keep you all safe and sound. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us Jannatul Firdaus, Al-Firdaus with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah grant us his rahmah. Irhamu man fil ard, irhamkum man fil sama. Show rahmah to those who are on earth. Allah will show you a rahmah, his rahmah, his rahman, a rahim. Jazakumullah khairan for being with us. And we'll continue to stay in touch, inshaAllah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We believe in the words of the Prophet Muhammad. May peace and blessings be upon him. Who said, the likeness of the believers in regard to mutual love, mercy, and kindness is that of one body. Even during the pandemic, we've carried on our critical work, transforming the lives of more than 13.8 million people. And this is all because of you. This Ramadan, continue your legacy of service to others because we are one. Donate today to Islamic Relief.